Dick Barton, Special Agent. Dick Barton, with an old wartime colleague, Snowy White, is on holiday at Grandley, a small village on the Devonshire coast. You know, Snowy, whoever called this a golf course light in his teeth. I don't know why you play the game, honest, I don't know. Well, there's something about the game that gets you. Not on this course, though. There's your ball, in that reach. Hell, it's unplayable. And this is supposed to be the fairway. I shall pick it up, Snowy, drop it over my left shoulder, and play it as though nothing had happened, without forfeiting a stroke. You can pick it up and take it home for me, sir. You know, Snowy, you must drop this sir business. We're not captain and sergeant now. Sorry, sir. Uh-uh. <laughs> I can't get used to calling you nothing else. Not now, not after six years. Oh, well. There. Well, where's the ball gone now? <laughs> over your left shoulder and down a rabbit hole. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Here you are. Now, have another go. Yeah, better still, look, you turn your back and I'll place it for you. Comes to the same thing, and it saves a lot of time. There. <clears throat> now, give it a bash. Ah, that's better. Now, where's the green? Now then, pass me my brassy. Mm-hmm. No, not that, that one there. Thanks. My favourite club, brassy. Now, watch this. I'm watching. Sure, oh, love a duck. What a slice. Where's it going to finish? In that quarry, by the looks of things. Yes. <laughs> Reckon you've just about had that one, sir. No fear. I've already lost two balls on this apology for the course. We're going to find that one if we have to climb the entire Devonshire coastline for it. Come on. <sighs> oh, well. We're out in the fresh air, I suppose. Tell me, Snowy. We haven't had much chance to speak to you since you got down here last night. How are you settling down? I'm not. I tried four jobs since we was demobbed and can't somehow seem to settle down to any of them. What are you working at now? I'm not. I had a slight difference of opinion with the foreman last Wednesday. We had words. So you're out of a job? That's right, sir. Your suggestion that I should come and spend a few days' holiday with you down here grandly just came at the right time. Good. And what about yourself, sir? Well, I'd saved quite a bit of money and I thought I'd just please myself and enjoy life for a time, so I did. What about your old job? Well, I was with the International Construction Corporation just before the war, and they were prepared to wait until I was ready to come back, but it's a desk job in London. I should go scatty now. But I've been thinking, you and I might start up together in business, a garage or something. That's what I really wanted to get you down here for. Well, I'm going for having a bash at anything with you, sir. You know that. The Barton Wide Garage is limited. Sounds well, doesn't it? Not bad. But don't let's stop down here for heaven's sake. Let's start up somewhere where there's some houses and a few bright lights. Oh, too much fresh air down here. It's just healthy. Now, I'd rather be up in that plane. A bit of excitement. Me too, Snowy. In the meantime, here's the quarry or whatever it is, but where's my golf ball? Love it, Jackson. Right, looking for a needle in a perishing haystack. <laughs> Queer-looking place, this, isn't it? Yeah, it looks like some kind of disused mine working. Uh, what? Right by the sea? Well, that's what it looks like. Let's climb down, see if there's any sign of that ball. Right. Weird-looking place, isn't it? Oh, it gives you the creep somehow. Look at that blooming great hole. Oh, yeah, in the side of that cliff. You don't call them holes, man. It's a cave. Yeah, well, if there was 50 golf balls here, you wouldn't be able to find them. It's too dark. Come on, let's have a look round. Follow my track. It's a bit tricky. Yeah. You got a torch? Now, do I look as I've got a torch? I came out to play golf. Now, what I mean is, you won't be able to see very much inside there without one. Yeah, what was that? Hmm? What? Well, I thought I I heard a sort of echoey noise from this cave. Imagination. No, I don't think so. I think that... Just a minute, Snowy. Listen. There's somebody running out of the cave. Well, he's got a torch. I can see it bobbing about. Here he comes. All right, all right, old chap. Hang on. (laughs) What's the trouble? Oh, dear, what a frightful thing to have happened for Desmond. What's the matter? Hang on a minute, chum. Get your breath back. I'm Professor Earnshaw. My friend Desmond and I were searching for fossils when he slipped and cut his head terribly badly, or oh, terribly badly. The blood made me feel quite faint. What have you done? Left him to bleed to death? No, 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 no. I've staunched the blood as best I could. I'm going for help quickly. He's quite conscious. If I can get a car or an ambulance, would you please go in and help him? Of course. You go along with the professor, Snowy. No, 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 really, no. A, a better idea, if you don't mind my saying so, would be if you could carry my friend to the entrance of the cave. He's a big man. It'll take the two of you while I hurry for help. Oh, that's sense, anyway. Come on in with me, Snowy. Right, sir. You carry on, Professor. <laughs> yes, yes. Don't yes, worry, but uh, your torch, will you? Uh, uh, yes, of course. Uh, there you are. Thank you so much. You'll find him about a hundred yards into the cave. I'll hurry along now. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Poor Desmond. Come on, Snowy. Desmond. See you later, Professor. Queer old bird. Yes. Humbug hat and Macintosh. Yeah. I'll sort of get up to go fossil hunting in. <laughs> Damn dark in this cave. And it twists and turns. Hey. Hello? 
Desmond, where are you? Okay, old boy. Coming, coming. There's his torch. Look, down there. We'll be with you in a jiffy, old chap. Iron door? Oh, yes. This is a sort of strong room. Who is it? Someone to give you a hand, old man. Don't worry. Did you... Did you get that swine? Eh? Swine? Who? That man. Didn't see his face. Got a black Homburg hat on the Macintosh. Saw that. Oh, your friend the professor. Yes, we saw him. No friend of mine. He's just stabbed me on the side. What? what? Look, shine the torch. Why, good God. Love a duck, sir. That's a nasty dude. Look, Snowy, you look after this chappy as best you can. I'll get on after the professor. Oh, just a minute. I know your voice. Come back here. Let's take a look at you. Why? What is it? Yes, aren't you Barton? You were in Trenton Commander once. That's right. Uh, Why, you're low, Jimmy. Low, aren't you? You were in military intelligence. Excuse me, sir. This chap's in a bad way, whoever he is. We want an ambulance. And I don't think that their professor's gone for one. Yes, okay, Snowy. Would you mind dashing off any conveyance you can get hold of? Anything. With some assistance. A couple of strong men. Yes, sir. Sure you'll be all right, sir. Yes, but you keep a sharp lookout for that professor, Bird. I will, sir. Back as quick as I can. Good man. Here, take my torch. Hurry. You betcha. I belong. Now then, let's take another look at you, old man. Look, Barton. You see that huge iron door? There. Yes, this is a sort of strong room. But don't talk, old son. Keep quiet while I try and staunch the blood. Oh, that fellow knew where to stab. And how? Now, now, listen to me, Barton. You must listen. But first, shine the torch all around this place. Mm. It's gone all right. What's gone? I'll tell you in a minute. There's not much time, but you must help. Of course I'll help. You know that. Good. Now then, I'm working for the War House, ML-13. We had a secret weapon. Top secret. We had a beauty. A real horror of a weapon, Barton. No kidding. A real horror. We uh, hid it in this strong room. Cut into the rock. Until it could be handed over to the United Nations, you see? I see, yes. The guards here were doubled recently because the date of handing over the weapon was drawing near. My boss, Colonel Gardner, head of MO13, had a hunt. Somebody might try to get hold of the thing. So he sent me down to check up. When I got here... No guards. Nobody here. I got as far as the iron door. It was open. And someone knifed me on the side. What do you want me to do? I'm losing blood fast. You must get away quickly to London. See Colonel Gardner, war office. Tell him what you know. I've had it, Barton. Look, where's the torch? Let's see if I can get you out of this place and into the open air. Barton, look! The door! The iron door, it's moving! Hey, what? What do you say? What the... Now don't let it shut, Barton! Don't let it shut! How do we get out now? We don't, Barton. There's a self-locking door. It only opens from outside. Oh, phew. What a nasty mess to be in. Still, so Snowy White won't be too long away, I hope. Unless... Yes, unless. I'm afraid, Barton, that your friend Snowy White has probably stopped a packet. That fellow wouldn't let him go for help. Well, that's that, then. Oh, I'm sorry about this. Oh, forget it. Hello, hey? I mean, what was that? What? I thought I heard something. Listen. I think our friend's come back. Yes, listen. Somebody's trying to open the door. Wait till he comes right into the room, right up to us. I'll give him Professor. I'll bash his Homburg hat over his eyes. Hello? Jimmy? Jimmy Lowe? Are you in there? Why? What the... That's Colonel Gardner, my boss, head of MS-13... What's happened? Who are you? No, don't move, my friend. Got a pistol in my hand. Are you Colonel Gardner? Who the devil are you? It's all right, Chief. Captain Barton, late of 20 Commander. Just the man you want. We're wasting time. Have you got a car? Yes. Then the sooner we get Jimmy Lowe to hospital, the better. He's been stabbed in the side. Who did it? Do you know? Tall fellow in a black Hamburg hat and a brown Macintosh. Not a shortish, stocky fellow. Ruddy complexion in flannels. It's my pal, Snowy White. We sent him for an ambulance or something. Oh, I'm afraid he didn't get very far. I found him lying on his face at the entrance to this cave. Somebody's given him one hell of a slosh on the back of his head. You don't mean he's... Good Lord, no. Just out for the count. He'll be as right as rain tomorrow. My men are putting him in the car now to go to the nearest hospital. And that's where we'll send low. Corporal! Sir! And two or three of you men, lift him carefully. Yes, sir. Right, sir. Come on. Uh, right. You take his legs. I'll take his uh, in. Sorry, Chief. I... Uh, oh. All right, old chap. 
Soon have you comfortable again. Nearest hospital, Corporal, quick as you can. Yes, yes sir, right. Man, there you go. Careful. Listen now. Barton, isn't it? That's right, Dick Barton. Lowe said you're just the man I want. Twenty commando, didn't he say? Captain? Yes, Snowy White out there was a sergeant with me. Married? No, neither of us. Any ties, work or anything? No, and not over eager to settle down to a humdrum existence. Only talking about it earlier on, strangely enough. Hmm. Might be able to use you two, Barton. You don't mind a lot of danger, plenty of hard graft, and possibly a knife in the back at the end of it all, with no flowers and no public funeral. Interested? <laughs> you make it sound extraordinarily attractive. No torture in it at all, I suppose. <laughs> I wouldn't even say no to that. Anyway, if you're interested, pack some things and come straight up to London with me. Your sergeant, pal, can follow up as soon as he feels fit enough. Is it on? You bet it's on. Thank you, Miss Hunter. You've got all that? Yes, Colonel Gardner. Well, now, Barton, you've met my personal assistant, Jean Hunter. We've not been introduced. Well, that'll come later. This is urgent. You've heard what Sir Archie Wrangle's just been telling us. That not only have they pinched the secret weapon, but they've also kidnapped the scientist who worked on it with Sir Archie. I can hardly believe that my colleague, James Thurgood, would have joined Wilhelm Kramer of his own free will. Wilhelm Kramer? Mm, head of the gang. Oh. And he means to hold the civilized world to ransom with this weapon. Ah, yes. But he can't. Oh? And why not, Sir Archie? Quite simply because I hold the formula for the protective antidote, which must be worn by the operators of this weapon. It was my invention, Excuse me, and... sir, but uh, may I make a suggestion? Of course. Go ahead, Miss Hunter. Uh, if all Kramer needs is the formula for the antidote, he'll stop at nothing to lay his hands on Sir Archie's papers. Hadn't we better have them here, sir, under lock and key? Of course we should. Have you got the papers with you, Sir Archie? No. No, they're in the pocket of another suit at home. But Miss Hunter is quite right. They should be here. I'll go and fetch them at once. My car's outside, and I should be back here again within the half hour. Hold on, Sir Archie. Confound the man. He's off like a shock rabbit. I'll take the lift. It's quicker. Ah, yes, and it's waiting on this floor. That lift wasn't working. Perfectly all right, Miss Hunter, when I used it an hour ago. I shan't be long. Oh! Oh, great heavens. Look, Barton. There's no flaw in it. Has Wilhelm Kramer set this trap? Will he get the vital papers? Can he work the secret weapon? Listen to the next installment of Dick Barton, Special Agent. Dick Barton, Special Agent. Wilhelm Kramer and his gang have stolen the new secret weapon, the invention of two British scientists, Sir Archie Wrangle and James Thurgood. It is Kramer's intention to hold the civilized world to ransom with this weapon, and he has persuaded one of the inventors, James Thurgood, to operate it for him. Kramer is now short of the formula for the protective antidote that must be worn by the operator. This antidote is the invention of Sir Archie Wrangle, who dashes out of the office of Colonel Gardner, head of MO13, having left the vital papers in his pocket at home. Hold on, Sir Archie. Confound the man. He's off like a shot rabbit. No, I'll take the lift. It's quicker. Ah, yes, and it's waiting on this floor. That lift wasn't working. Perfectly all right, Miss Hunter, when I used it an hour ago. I shan't be long. Oh, oh great heavens. Look, Barton. There's no flaw in it. Oh. Come on. Well, on the second floor, Barton. That means he's fallen two stories. I don't want to be depressing, Colonel Gardner. At his age. It would be such perfect swines to do such a thing. Don't think it would be the old boy at all, Miss Hunter. He was for my benefit. I think you're right, sir. They wouldn't harm Sir Archie. He's got the other half of the secret weapon. He had the other half. You mean it may have gone already? Ah, here we are. If uh, you'll just give me your hand, uh, sir. You the night porter on duty? Yes, sir. Mm. Horrible business, this, sir. All right, all right. Let me lift him. Oh, I can right. damage myself. There. Uh, Let's have a look. Uh, it's, uh, it's my shoulder and left leg. 
Phone for an ambulance, Jean, will you? Yes, sir. Uh, phone in my office there, Miss. Right. What? What happened? Somebody had tempered with a lift. Your fault, Gardner. Blast you. All right, Sir Archie. Take it easy. Shouldn't have brought me here. Anyone else uh, hurt? Just your shoulder and leg? Seems like it. Uh, You're lucky, sir. You should be dead. Take some killing, we wrangles. It's probably meant for me, not you. Well, that's a lot of comfort. Porter? Yes, sir. How long have you been on duty? Uh, three hours, sir. Have you let anyone into the building apart from Sir Archie? Oh, yes, sir. Just after Sir Archie came in the place and went up in the lift with two coppers, the, the, the coppers come down and went out, and, well, then two electricians come in to fix the lift, they say. Why did you let them in? Well, they had special passes, sir. Did you recognise them? I did not, sir. You have to take off your hat to these other people, sir. Their staff works first rate. I could do with a drink. Ah, here's Jean. Okay, Jean. Yes, sir. Ambulance coming right away. And I've brought some brandy from the first aid chest. Well, that was thoughtful. Oh, thank you, Kat, sir. Well, I mean, girls don't usually think of these things. The brandy, sir. Thanks. Your remarks ah. about girls, you don't seem to know mm. much about them. Mm. Take a swig of this, Archie. Mm, mm, mm. Ah, it's better. Now, listen, Gardner. Yes? You better get along to my place. Brown sports jacket. Jacket hanging in the wardrobe in my bedroom. Inside pocket, you'll find a blue envelope. Uh, that's what you want. Better lock it up somewhere safe. Why not destroy that down? Because thing? you may need it one day. If these people should find any way of working that weapon, which, God forbid, then you'll need the formula in that blue envelope. The sooner we get hold of it, then the better. I don't feel comfortable while it's lying in that empty house. So, listen, Jean. I want you to stay with Sir Archie. Colonel Gardner, I am your assistant, shall we? Of course. And so you obey in orders. Yes, sir. Not the sort of work for a woman, this... There are times, Captain Barton, when you appear to be an extremely irritating person. This is one of them. Listen, Jean. Ring up the barracks, get a guard, take them with you in the ambulance to the hospital, and arrange for them to stay on guard over Sir Archie all night. Mm -hmm. Arrange for the barracks for the guard to be changed night and morning. What the devil is all... All right, Sir Archie, you're not a prisoner. It sounds devilish like it. I'm not taking any chances. They've got the weapon and your colleague, James Thurgood. The only thing missing now is your formula. The best way for them to get hold of that is to get hold of you. You've got all that, Jean? Yes, sir. Well, in the circumstances, it might be an idea if you went along to the hospital and saw Sir Archie comfortably settled. I will. Oh, yeah. I think that's all, Sir Archie. Oh, I wish to heaven I'd never had anything to do with a confounded invention. <laughs> so say all of us. Still, no. it's too late now. How's the leg and shoulder? Oh, not too bad. This fellow's fixed me up as well as possible. You'll do, sir. Uh, till they do the job properly at the hospital. Warm enough? Yes, yes, but, oh, you can give me another snifter. Mm-hmm. Ah, that's better. I think I'll keep this by me, just in case I feel faint. Right, Barton. We'll be on our way if you're ready. I'm ready. And when we've collected this thing and put it safely away... Oh, just a sec. What? Better get you fixed up. Hang on. Now what? You armed. Armed? Me? No, of course not. It's an offence without a special licence, isn't it? Yes. But in this game you feel silly if the other side has a permanent advantage in that line. Yeah, I see your point. How long have you been mixed up with all this? Long enough to know my way about. Woman's place is in the hole. Yeah, yes, yeah, Sir Archie, that's what I always say. Never did care for the gun mull type. I beg your pardon. You know what I mean. I do not know what you mean, Captain Barton. Unless you consider me to be the gun mull type, as you put it. I like to see a woman with children at her knee, roses round the door and all that, knitting tiny garments, you know. In that case, I suggest you get married without delay and leave this sort of work to people who can cope with it. <laughs> hoity toity, my proud beauty. Oh, my lad, you seem to have said the wrong thing. <laughs> Here you are, Barton. It's loaded. Thank you, sir. Oh, takes me back a bit, this. Thought it wouldn't feel too strange in your hand. Right. Come on, then, Barton. We'll get along. I've got your address, Sir Archie. Eh? Warren, Bramley Garden. Yes, eh? that's right. Yes. Cheer ho. <laughs> Bye, Jean. See you later. Goodbye, sir. Well, good luck, Sir Archie. I'll pop into the hospital and see you tomorrow. Well, don't bring me any flowers. I loathe them. My, uh, my car's standing by, Barton. Okay, sir. Bramley Gardens, Carter. You know the way. Yes, sir. Sir Archie Wrangle's place. We don't seem to be doing too well, do we, sir? I mean, Kramer and his crowd are holding most of the tramp cards to date. They've got the secret weapon. They've kidnapped one of the men who invented it. It isn't really our fault. We're still here at all. That's true enough. They can't work the weapon without Sir Archie's formula. In any case, they'll need a plane to use it at all. What do you think they'll do, then? Well, obviously, their first job, assuming that James Thurgood is prepared to work with them, would be to get hold of either Sir Archie or his formula. Then they'll smuggle everything out of the country, get hold of some aircraft... Oh, the whole world to ransom. Is the weapon frightful enough to do that? Without the slightest doubt, Barton. They are in a position to use the weapon, and once its details are made known, they could be masters of the world, I'm sure of it. My well, only hope lies in the fact that they haven't got the formula, then. And the fact that, first, they can't very well get out of the country, and second, we don't know for certain that James Thurgood is going to be on their side. They can uh, persuade him, though. They certainly can. 
And will, if necessary. Hmm. I'm looking forward to making the acquaintance of friend Wilhelm Kramer. He seems a decent type. You'll do anything for money and power, particularly power. And you really think that if Kramer gets hold of this weapon and can operate it, then he's sitting pretty? Once the public know about it, yes. He can make his own terms. It must be a pretty bright sort of weapon. To get some idea, think over all you know about mustard gas, lewisite, and phosgene. Add a touch of leprosy, multiply all that a few times, and you have a remote suspicion of the cumulative effects of this weapon on the human frame. But surely a gas like that would prove difficult to put into action. It's the whole point, Barton. It's the devilish ingenuity of the thing. It's not a gas at all. All those effects are caused by a ray from a machine which can be operated by one man. The whole thing is a sort of byproduct of atomic research. Oh, well. Thank heavens Kramer's still short of part of the thing. We hope. You think they may be already on the trail? If I were Kramer... I was short of the one vital link. I'd sent someone along to Wrangled House in the hope that the old boy might have done precisely what he did do, left the darn thing behind. If James Thurgood has talked, then Kramer will know what to look for. In that case, the sooner we get to family gardens, the better. Oh, shan't be long. And, uh, Barton. Yes? If it should be necessary to shoot, then make sure you do it for the other fellow. You've got past the kid glove stage in this affair. Mind you, I understand from what old Wrangled said that Kramer already has sufficient information to operate the weapon if James Thurgood will help him. Yes, he has, but only at the expense of the operator's sight. Oh, yes, it attacks the eyes first, I remember. And however fanatical Thurgood may be, I can't see him deliberately blinding himself just to help Kramer out of a hole. No, as you say, everything depends on Sir Archie's formula. And here's Sir Archie's house. Hello, well, Sam. Everything quiet here since Sir Archie left. Who might you be, sir, to want to know? Uh, take a look at this. Oh, sorry, sir. Can't be too careful, you know. That's all right. No suspicious characters around? I see nobody, sir. All as peaceful as a marriage feast, you might say. You're the only man on duty? No, sir. There's another chap patrolling round the back. Isn't there anyone living in the house? Did Sir Archie live alone? No, he had a housekeeper. She wouldn't stay in the place on her own, though. Said he gave her the creeps or something. Don't know what she meant. There ain't nobody in the place now, anyway, sir. Pretty dark and gloomy. Uh, no, no light, sir. Well, I think the housekeeper must have switched them off at the bank before she left. Got a torch with you, Barton? No. Nope. Lend me your torch off, sir, will you please? Got a bit of searching to do. Certainly, sir. There you are. Watch the switch. It's a bit of a faulty contact. It's all right when you've got the knack. Thanks. Well, come on, Barton. If we're not out in ten minutes, officer, come in after us with your pal, will you? Yes, sir. Come on, then. Oh, constable, tell my driver he can park the car over there. Very good, sir. Certainly is a gloomy looking place. It's an oldish house. Hey, just a minute. What the? Oh, hello, officer. Just seen your pal at the gate. Yeah. Take a look at this. Uh, oh, sorry, sir. Uh, carry on. I've asked him to give us ten minutes in there, and if we're not out, to come in after us. Oh, right, sir. Uh, everything's quiet enough, though, sir. Oh, good. Door's not locked, is it? No, sir. You don't know where the electric main switch is, do you? I don't, sir. I haven't been in the place. I don't fancy it much, what I've heard. Oh, why? Well, old Wrangle was a scientist, you know. There's all sorts of queer things in that laboratory of his. That's all they tell me, sir. So who tells you? Oh, local gossip, you know. This is my beat, sir. Now, dear. Doesn't do to pay too much attention to that. Come on, Barton. Give us ten minutes, Doctor. Yes, sir. Nuisance about the lights. Ah, there we are. We're in, anyway. There are the stairs facing us. Should be able to tell the old boys for them easily enough. <laughs> Torch isn't too hot. Yeah, that's better. The switch keeps jamming. Now then, try this room. Definitely not. No, I guess you're right. Housekeeper, perhaps. We'll try the next one, then. No, nope. bathroom. We'll try this. Ah, this looks more like it. Yes, there's the wardrobe. Ah, sports jacket. Here we are. You held the torch. I'll look in the pocket. That's it. Here, what's this? Envelope. Blue, this is it. Shine the torch. Here. Yeah, lots of figures and things. That's it, all right. I'll have it, thanks. Well, good night's work, Barton. Once this is safely under lock and key, we can breathe a little more freely. Why? 
What's up? Not a bad idea to see who it is. This torch is the very devil. Here's the phone. Right. Hello? Is that Colonel Gardner? Yes, speaking. This is Jean Hunter. Oh, hello, Jean. What's the trouble? It's about Sir Archie. I'm afraid he's a bit delirious. Is he? Poor old chap. Uh, but he keeps telling me to warn you by phone about his specimens. What? What's he mean by that? I don't know. But he's most insistent that you should be careful and that I was to warn you urgently about his specimens. Oh. And he says you must come away from his house as soon as you can. Well, we finished what we came here for, so that's all right. Won't affect us. Well, see you tomorrow, sir. Yes, see you tomorrow. You get some sleep. Guard okay? Yes, everything's under control. Good. Night, Jean. Good night, sir. Jean Hunter. The old boy isn't too good. A bit delirious. Sorry about that. Thought he seemed too perky after that fall. Hmm. Keeps on telling Jean to warn us about his specimens, whatever that may mean. Specimens? Of what? She doesn't know. He's most insistent that we should be careful, so she rang to warn us. Oh, good of her, but I wish I knew what she was warning us about. It doesn't matter much in view of the fact that we're leaving anyway. Ah, darn this torch. What on earth? It came from that room, sir. Shine the torch. I'm trying to. Unauthorized visitors, eh? Have a gun ready. Come on. Watch out. Maybe a trick. I'll fling the door open. Shine the torch, sir. It won't work. Listen. Listen, sir. There's something alive coming this way. What is the secret of the room? What has happened to the man who screamed? What is crawling towards Gardner and Barton? Listen to the next installment of Dick Barton, Special Agent. Dick Barton, Special Agent. Kramer and his gang have captured the secret weapon, also one of the two scientists who invented it. But Kramer is still short of some vital information before he can operate it. Colonel Gardner, head of MO13, and Dick Barton are searching for this information in the dark at the other scientist's house, have found the papers, and are about to leave when suddenly... Help! Take it off me! Ah, take it off! Ah! Shine the torch, sir. It won't work. Listen. Listen, sir, there's something alive coming this way. Now, blast the torch. Shut the door, then. Just a sec. There, it's got it now. Where is this thing? Torch is okay now. Shine it on the floor. Oh, oh Jimmy. By Jove. Quick, Barton, quick. Okay. Hold the torch steady on its eyes. Got it. Keep well back. Make sure. Yes. Oh, oh what a beastly mess. Listen a minute. Are there any more about? Can't hear anything else. Just a minute. Good heavens, Barton. The room is full of glass cases, look. And every case has got live... Oh, what are they? Looks like some species of spider to me. There was only spiders like this before. Look at the size of the one I shot. I wonder why it was sliding across the floor to us. Should have thought it would have run at us. Damaged, maybe, when our friend knocked over its case. Yes, look at its legs. But what about our friend? Let's take a look at him. He's not dead. He's breathing. Perhaps he's one of the specimens that Sir Archie told your secretary to warn us about. Nasty-looking creature. He's out for the count. Doesn't seem to be any mark on him. Must be shot. Wonder who he is. One of Kramer's men? You bet. Well, let's get into a doctor. He's too useful to leave lying about. May be able to help us a lot. He's the first real clue we've found. Right. If you'll help me with the sleeping beauty here, you take his legs. Okay. Lift. <coughs> Outside with him. And let's shut the damn door. Colonel God. Colonel God. Thank you, sir. We had a shot. Everything's all right, Constable. Give me a hand with this man to my car, will you? We've got a friend of yours here. What do you got there, Captain Barton? A corpse? Snowy White. You back? You betcha. <laughs> Wouldn't miss out on this. How's the head? Oh, that's all right now, sir. 
just like to meet the bloke that did it, that's all. Is this more trouble? Well, we're under something, I think. And you left me out of it? Well, I'm sorry, Snowy, but you'd had that nasty smack on the bean. You weren't really fit for action. But I am now, sir. <laughs> like old times all over again, isn't it, sir? Reckon we're lucky, you and I, getting into this racket. Reckon we are, Snowy. Well, what's the set-up now? Well, the other side seems to have scored most of the points up to now. A fellow called Kramer's the leader of the opposition. Any idea where he hangs out? No, but that fellow we've just captured in this house may be one of Kramer's crowd. Put him in the car. I'll take him back to my office, and by tomorrow morning, things should be moving. Barton, you and your friend, get some shut-eye and be at my place by ten. Right, sir, and at ten tomorrow morning, we move over to the attack. You took the words out of my mouth. Well, good night. Good night. Good night, sir. And don't dream of spiders. <laughs> <laughs> Look, sir, over the road. I've just seen him. Seen who, Snowy? Well, him that conked me on the head. Over the other side of the road, look. Tall chap with the Homburg hat and the Macintosh. The perisher. Snowy, don't let him see you, man. Yes, it's him, all right. Blast, he has seen us. Oh, he's got a car waiting. Let's follow him, sir. Good idea, Snowy. Uh, there's a taxi. Hey, taxi! Follow that car. Quick, driver, there's a quid for you if you don't lose him. Good enough. Hop in. The lights are against him. He's away already. Lights have changed. Step on it. Don't worry, sir. We'll keep on his tail. Looks like he's heading for the river. Got a pencil, Snowy. Uh -huh. I'll drop a note to Colonel Gardner in case anything goes wrong. You watch the chase. We're doing fine, sir. Tailing him nicely. Good. Now, dear Colonel, on the track of man in Hamburg hat who knifed Jimmy Le... What happened to Lowe, Snowy? I'm afraid he's at it, sir. He's still in hospital. Oh, poor chap. Leaving taxi driver with this note for you we left taxi at he's stopping sir what already blimey that was quick he hopped off uh, and the car's gone on that probably helps we'll follow the car hold it driver right sir think he he dodged through that doorway over there sir that warehouse yeah probably helping to give us the slip here driver wait for 10 minutes if we don't come out of that doorway by then take this note as quick as you can to colonel gardner war office i'll finish the note what's the name of the warehouse uh, it's written up Aspinall's... Aspinall's... T... Warehouse. T... Warehouse. Yeah. Here's the note, driver. Okay, sir. I know the place. I'll bring him back here if you don't come out. Good man. Give us ten minutes. And don't forget, driver, Colonel Gardner, War Office. I won't forget, sir. Good lad. We'll see you don't regret it. Come on, Snowy. With you, sir. Colonel Gardner, War Office. What a blooming note. What a pair of suckers. Took the bait as easy as kiss your hand. Sid. Hello, Professor. Switch off the engine. They've gone in, have they? Well, they have. And it worked like a charm. <laughs> they even give me a quid to take a note to Colonel Gardner. <laughs> nice work, Sid. Nice work. Beat it. Now, go on, beat it. Yes. The leader will attend to Mr. Barton and his friend in the leader's own inimitable way. Well, all I can say is, have an open professor if they are left to his tender mercies. <laughs> Keep your eyes open, Snow. Yeah. Big place, isn't it? Yeah. Nobody about there. What did you say the name was? Aspinall's Tea Warehouse, it says on this door. I can't see any signs of tea lying about. Well, you'd think they'd have a watchman or somebody on duty, wouldn't you, to stop people from... from... pinching the tea that isn't here. <laughs> <laughs> Can I help you in any way, gentlemen? That well, depends who you are. I'm an employee of Aspinall's Tea Warehouses Limited. Can I do anything for you? Well, you could make us a nice cup of tea... Too lunch. My friend has a strong sense of humour. <laughs> I must apologise. Actually, we were expecting to meet someone here, a gentleman in a black Homburg hat, brown Macintosh. You haven't seen him? Uh, no. No, I don't think I have. Well, perhaps he went through that door over there. Oh, this door over here, you mean? Hmm. Uh, please, come this way. Uh, this is Mr Jackson's office, gentlemen. If you'll just step inside. After you, gentlemen. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, Tar very much. Now, what the... F He's banged the perishing door on us, sir. Open it, sir. Open it. There's no knob on this door on the inside. No. And the door fits flush. <laughs> yeah, it looks like we walked into a bit of a trap, Snowy, my boy. Yeah, you know, I thought the old setup smelled a bit fishy. Not much like an office now, is it? Is it? Not much. Room's completely bare. Except for this table in the centre here. Now, what do we do, hmm? I'm afraid, Mr. Barton, there's very little you can do. The blinking. Now for the melodrama, Snowy. Precisely, Mr. Barron, as you so intelligently point out. Now for the melodrama. Where's his, his voice coming from, sir? Allow me to explain. 
And by an ingenious mixture of loudspeakers and microphones, I can hear every word you say, my friends, and you can hear what I say. Who are you, anyway? <laughs> but of course, how very impolite of me. My name is Kramer, Wilhelm Kramer. Blimey, the kingpin himself. The kingpin himself, as your friend so aptly phrases it, Mr. Barton. But uh, as the hour is late, I suggest we do not waste time. Uh, first, you appreciate, I trust, that our friend, uh, the professor, as we call him, the man in the black Homburg hat, was sent as a decoy to lure you here. Oh, I see the spider and the fly, eh? <laughs> Trouble with you, Willie. You read too many thrillers before going to bed. Uh, please, Mr. Barton, don't prolong this discussion under the mistaken impression that you are playing for time. Meaning what? Only that the taxi driver who brought you here was also one of my men. <laughs> So that the little note you wrote to Colonel Gardner was delivered to me. Oh, love a duck. That's a perishing nuisance, isn't it? Not really, Snowy. Wait and see. Why not be honest, Barton, and admit that you just had quite a shock? My dear Willie, you seem to think you hold all the trump cards. That remains to be seen. Quite so. Now, I have a proposition to make to you. What sort of proposition? I need new recruits in my organization. Men such as yourself, and for that matter, your friend. <laughs> yeah, that's no <laughs> Join forces. Oh, really, Willie, the things you say. It is never a wise thing, Mr. Barton, to underestimate your enemy. I don't, Willie, old sir, but you surely don't expect me to take your outfit seriously, do you? As to that, Barton, I'll step aside a moment and allow a most eminent British scientist to give you his views. You may have heard of him. Mr. James Thurgood. Ah, Snowy, the other inventor of the secret weapon. We've been waiting to meet this cove. Oh, yeah. Why not be wise, Barton? Don't you realize that Wilhelm Kramer and I, with our new devastating weapon, can have complete mastery over the whole world? You haven't got all of the weapon yet, old son. Oh, that's just a matter of time. We have everything except the antidote. Soon we shall have that. Then, then, Barton, we shall be masters. Masters! I'll get some of my nerves, this blood does, sir. Can't we switch him off? Do you realize what we offer you, Barton? A share in the complete domination of the civilized world as we know it. I hate to say it, James Thurgood, but you bore me. Go away and leave us in peace. Mr. Barton, both I and Mr. Thurgood have asked you to join our party of your own free will. And like the girl in the song, Willie, our answer is no, no, a thousand times no, ain't it, Snowy? That's right, sir. In that case, I'm afraid we shall have to use a little persuasion. Ah, now the melodrama's really beginning, Snowy. Ah. I hope, Mr. Barton... That you will continue to find the whole affair as big a joke as you seem to have done so far. Probably laugh our bloomin' heads off, will you? I hope so. But in actual fact, if anyone derives any amusement from the next few minutes, I rather think it will be Mr. Thurgood and myself. Don't get on with it. I have already begun to do so. If you look into each corner of the room you are in, Mr. Barton, you will see that four small trap doors have opened. Lordy, sir. He's right. Look. Now, Mr. Barton. Let us see how much longer you continue to treat the affair as a joke. Watch those little entrances most carefully. You can't get out through them, Mr. Barton. They're too small. But something might get in through them. Why not get on with it, Willie? This is beginning to get boring. Just as you wish, of course, Barton. But I did warn you. Can you hear anything? Hmm? Can you hear anything, Barton? Listen carefully. Hear that squeaking, sir? Yeah. Sounds very much like a few of your friends and relations, Willie. In other words, rats. Yeah, uh, a few relatives in for a supper, maybe. Hey, eh, Willie? In a way, yes. They are hungry, ravenously hungry. They haven't eaten anything for days. Starving rats, eh? Nice type, our Williams, you know it. Yeah, one of the best. You don't wish to uh, change your minds at all, gentlemen. My dear Kramer, we've already had you and friend James Thurgood trying to persuade us. You don't think that a few more of the same species are likely to make any difference? I'd advise you both to get onto the table and keep your feet and legs clear of the floor from now on. There is room on the table for you both if you sit close together. You will observe that the legs are made of tubular steel. The rats cannot climb up them, so that you are relatively safe, as long as you don't fall off. Oh, come on, Willie. Let's see your little pets. Oh, one thing more. Uh, these pets, as you call them, which you are just about to meet, are rather different from the usual type of rat. Uh, James Thurgood arranged that for me. Indeed, very kind of him, I'm sure. Yes. He has injected them with all sorts of strange and unusual diseases. Rabies, bubonic plague, mm, quite a number. The slightest bite from one of them. And well, Mr. Barton, it will be interesting to see just what happens to you. Most interesting. You filthy swine, Come, on, come, my dear Barton. What has happened to the gay laughter, the merry jests? Not getting scared, I trust? 
Very soon there will be enough of my little pets in this room to keep your mind occupied all night. So I'll leave you until the morning. Three rousing chills. But if before morning you should wish to change your minds, just shout. Nasty thing, bubonic plague. I shall look forward to meeting you again, Kramer, in slightly different circumstances. <laughs> the likelihood of that seems at the moment to be remote. I'll say good night, see you in the morning, and leave you both to your thoughts and the rats. Oh, my duck, sir. Here they come. Uh, I want to this table. Quick! Right beside you, Snowy. They try to look ugly, don't they? <laughs> What will happen to Barton and Snowy? How can Colonel Gardner find them now? Will the rats get their meal? Listen to the next installment of Dick Barton, Special Agent. Dick Barton, Special Agent. Wilhelm Kramer and his gang have captured the secret weapon. They have also captured one of the two British scientists who invented it. But Kramer is still short of certain vital information before he can operate it. He has therefore lured Dick Barton and Snowy White to his hideout in Aspinall's tea warehouse, locked them in a room with only one table, and because they refuse to join his party, lets poisoned rats into their prison. You're a duck, sir. Here they come. Up onto the table, quick. Right beside you, Snowy. <laughs> they kind of look hungry, don't they? There's such a blasted fool sitting up here on this table like this. Uh, best place to be, sir, just at the moment. At least we're safe up here. They can't climb up my steel legs, even though we have to wait here till morning. It's that big perisher there I don't like. I've been watching him. He's got an odd look in his eye as though he's working out what to do next. Crikey, right, sir. Look, the blooming things are staring up like dogs, waiting for their dinner. Don't let him get on your nerves, Snowy, old son. It's a long time to morning. Oh, I know, sir, I know, but well, I don't know. I, I feel so perishing helpless. Come off a mind to get down and have a bash at them. Don't be crazy, Snowy. One scratch from their teeth and you'd have had it. Imagine what would happen if you tripped and fell. Oh, bloody, just bad thinking about, does it? They seem to be getting venturesome. I uh, wonder if they'd eat each other, sir, if they're that hungry. Well, it's an idea. And we've got our guns with us. In any case, that big blighter wants a tendency pretty really quickly. That's the second time he's jumped. Here goes. <laughs> what? Killing my little pets off already, Mr. Barton? Mm. Now, let me see. If you each have a revolver, that would make 12 shots in all. Ah, well, we have plenty more rats. So just let me know if you are running short. Good night. See you in the morning. And to think, Snowy, we're doing Colonel Gardner's office at 10 tomorrow morning. Yes, I hope so. Unless he comes out looking for us. You mean he might smell a rat? <laughs> <laughs> Try and get some shut eyes. What the devil's the time, Dean? Past ten o'clock. I should have thought Barton and Snowy White would have been along by now. They know how urgent it is. What exactly were their instructions? To get a night's sleep, come here at ten o'clock, so that we can question this chappy we found unconscious at Wrangle's house last night, and get some sort of line on Kramer's hideout. Mm. Oh, by the way. Yes, sir. Have you got that large box that came from Wrangle's house? Yes, here it is. What's inside it, I don't know, but it scuffles about. You soon will. You left old Wrangle tucked up safe and sound last night? Yes, and he seemed much better when I left the hospital. Nasty fall for a man of his age. Two flights down that lift shaft. Miracle he didn't break his neck. You left a guard on him at the hospital? Oh, yes. And they're being changed every eight hours. Good. Don't want him kidnapped like the other scientist. But at least we've got his secret formula under lock and key. In the safe, sir. But where the blazes is Barton? I think we've waited long enough. We'd better get to work on our prisoner. Shall I have him sent in? Yes, I'll see what some gentle persuasion can do. Yes, bring him in. In here, please. Come along, you. Hey, you want me to stand by, sir? He's a nasty-looking cuss. No, that's all right. I can attend to him. Very good, sir. Wait in the next room with Miss Hunter. I'll ring if I want you. Yes, sir. Now, what's your name? Harry Andrews. I ain't done nothing, sir. What were you doing in Sir Archie Wrangle's house last night? I lost my way, sir. Now, look here. My time's short, Andrews. I want the truth, and I want it fast. 
Why were you in Ferrati's house? Oh, so I don't know, Frank. I was there for the truth. Go on. Well, I thought it was an empty house, sir. I, I, I thought there might be some pickings there. Yes. I went through one of the windows, you know. I knocked over something in the dark. It was a crash of glass, and then. Oh, Lord, sir, it was horrible. I could hear something slivering towards me. I shone the torch, and. Blimey, sir, it was like a great spider. Go on. I passed out, sir. Right out. When I woke up, I was here. What were you doing in Wrangle's house? Anything I could find. What were you doing? And what were you looking for? I told you, sir, straight off. If I can't persuade you to tell the truth, I've got something here that can. It's in this box. It's another of Wrangle's spiders. No, sir. No, not for heaven's sake. All right. One more chance. You're one of Kramer's men, aren't you? Yes, sir. But he'll kill me, sir, if he finds out I've squealed. Straight, he'll kill me, he will. Where is Kramer's headquarters? If I tell you, you'll have to protect me, or he'll kill me. Get on with it at once. Kramer's headquarters he... is... It's... Oh, God, he'll kill me, sir. It's Aspinall's Tea Warehouse, sir. It's a place by the river. Aspinall's Tea Warehouse. Fine. <laughs> Why the devil didn't you tell me this before? Miss Hunter, Sergeant, there's not a minute to lose. It's getting light, Snowy. Must be morning. Any more ammo left? Not so as you'd notice it, but not many rats either. All night long I've been turning things over in my mind. Listen, Snowy. Yep. Speak very quietly. Uh-huh. Remember the old signal for action? Oh, that tune you used to whistle, sir. Yes. Just wondered if you remembered. Uh-huh. Now then, Snowy. <clears throat> I, I've been thinking. It seems to me that Colonel Gardner and his crowd have just left us in the lurch by the look of things. Oh, I don't know, sir. Give them a chance. But, Snowy, think for a minute. These people here have been ahead by about three jumps all along the line. Have been ever since we came into the game. Had all the luck. That's what it is, sir. Luck be blowed. Gardner's not in the same street as friend Billy Cramer and his boys, so far as organization and general efficiency are concerned. What are you getting at, sir? Just that... Well, I'm not ever keen to finish up as a starving rat's tidbit, are you? What are you driving at, sir? Well, maybe we've been on the wrong side so far. Good morning, Mr. Barton. This is much more intelligent of you. Well, why the blazes should we? Exactly, my dear Barton. Just what I was saying last night. Now, look, Captain Barton, I've been with you a long time, sir. I know, Blazes, but... Snowy, you shall loaf a bit. One boss is very much like another. After all, what we asked for was excitement and money, wasn't it? Well, count me out, sir. Don't be a fool, Snowy. Now's our chance to cash in on things. Yes, yeah. yes. It could do with a, a bit of ready, I must say, sir. I am prepared to pay you a hundred pounds a week to begin with, between you, plus fifty thousand once the secret weapon is safe in my hands, complete. Rather duck, sir. That's money, isn't it? It certainly is. What would you want us to do exactly, Kramer? Obtain Sir Archie Rangel's formula. That's all, to begin with. You mean we should get fifty thousand quid for supplying you with that? Of course. Without the formula for the antidote, neither James Thurgood nor I are able safely to operate the weapon. Uh, but, of course, you know that. I think we can safely say we can help you. But need we continue to discuss this in these uh, rather unpleasant surroundings? <laughs> it's a little difficult for me, Barton, to be quite convinced that your sudden change of heart is genuine. However, I am now sending down two men, suitably dressed, to your room. One of them to look after what remains of the rats, the other to keep you both covered. You understand? Yes. If you should try any funny tricks, well, both my men will be thoroughly protected from the rats, whereas you will be unprotected. Uh, that alone places you at a distinct disadvantage. You're telling us. And when all the rats are caged, my two men will bring you along to my room upstairs. Here come the men now. Cheery little tune, that's it. Ah, the rat catchers. Ah, good morning, comrades. Blimey. <laughs> Talk about two Frankensteins. Well, they're certainly <laughs> dressed up to the nines. All right. Stay where you are. A pair of you. I'm watching you both. No funny business. Don't get scared, Hubert. We know when we're licked. My name happens to be Hans. Oh, bad luck, mate. Get these animals in their cages. Quick as your can, Ah, oh, one second, a minute. Good. Lovely ducks. Look at the way they bite at those cages. Imagine being on the floor with that lot all over you. That is all right when you know how to handle them. And provided you're covered up proper. Yes, unfortunately, we um, ain't covered proper. Yes, you are. Covered by me. Sorry. 
Shut up. Keep your mouth shut. There you are. It's a lot. Don't take half a minute. Rats is all right when he knows how to handle them. Well, you said that before. And I'll say it again. Rats is all right when you know how to All right. Them. Now, you can get down off that table, you two. <coughs> oh, thank heavens. Oh, last time I ever sit on a table, this is... My mother always used to say it was bad luck. <laughs> Blimey, how right she was. Now, no funny business while I open this door. Right, Snowy, no! Look out! Get oh. Nice work! Oh, no, you I don't! Me blast, no. No. Okay, sir. Surely missed. You, you idiot! <laughs> what chance do you think you've got? I know. Oh, ah. Not now, then. Not right, you. Oh, oh nice work, sir. Oh. How are you? <laughs> I'm going to pull that cage of rats. Quick, sir. Quick, the door. Would you, Snowy, quick? Nice work. We're outside. Oh, that big bloke knocked over that cage of rats. Yes, he was lying on the floor with his helmet off. <coughs> Looks like the rats are going to get their breakfast after all. Come on, Snowy. That's the door over there. We came through when we first arrived last night. Attention, attention, all personnel. Plan to come in operation at once. All personnel. This is the leader speaking. Put plan to in operation. What the devil is plan to, sir? Blessed if I know, but I don't feel like staying here to find out. Come on. Will you, sir? No, wait a tick, Snowy. It's plain madness to dash across this open warehouse. It's too exposed. There's no cover. Uh, but, but there's the entrance over there. Let's make a dash. Don't be a twerp, Snowy. Here, follow me. Don't make too much of a clatter. Keep to the walls. Uh, seems a devil of a way, doesn't it, sir? Just from here to that there entrance. So far, so good. Mm. I expected a few revolver shots before now. Uh, seems to have forgotten about us, don't Don't I? speak too soon. This is the worst bit. Now, Snowy, yeah? we've got to cover this last 10 or 15 yards in the open. If there's anyone waiting back there with a gun, well, this is going to be a glorious opportunity to pick us off. Now, Snowy. Yes, sir? When I say right, you make a dash for it. Keep zigzagging all over the place. Make yourself a more difficult target. What about you, sir? No good both of us running together. They'll be bound to hit one of us. I'll follow as soon as you've got across. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Give me the word. Get ready and try to imagine you're running in the Olympic Games. Good luck, Snowy. Now then, right! Do it, Snowy. Good man. He's made it. Okay, sir. Oh, good old Snowy. Nothing like giving the other side fair warning. Well, my turn now. Here goes. Come on, sir. Come on. If those baskets fire at him, I'll... Uh... Oh, nice work, sir. It's an anticlimax, that Snowy. <laughs> Not a single shot. I wonder why. I can't make it out, sir. They seem to have lost interest in us all of a sudden. Well, don't let's hang about. Keep running and get away from this blasted warehouse just as fast as we can. Oh, here we are, Jean. Is the ten minutes almost up? Very nearly, sir. About half a minute to go. Everything in order, Inspector? Yes, sir. All the men have been told. Three long blasts on the police whistle and we move into the attack. Splendid. Good luck. And don't shoot unless you have to. Right, sir. Oh, that's the trouble here. There's a couple of men running like blazes up that street, sir. The devil there is. Well, they've got to come past us. Shall we stop them? Here they come, sir. Right. Great Scott. It's Mr. Barton. Yes, sir, that friend of his. All right, you two. All right, take it easy. Listen, Constable, it's urgent. All, All right. right, Barton, get your breath. Well, I'm hanged. Nice work, sir. I don't know how you got onto our track, but have you got any reinforcements? Yes, plenty. You've just come from Aspinall's warehouse? Yeah. How do you know? Too long a story to tell you now, but we've got the whole place surrounded. Just a job, sir. Let's have a bash at them. Surrounded, sir. Have you? On all sides except the river. You've got no guard on the river? No, why? Do you think? I don't know. I mean, I heard Kramer telling all his men to put a plan two into operation forthwith. I wonder whether they might have got wind of your movements. Good reason for getting a signal at once and start moving. Here goes, anyway. So far, so good. Not a soul about, is there? No. Let's push on anyway. There's another door down here. Stand back while I kick it open, just in case. Yeah. Still no signs of anyone. But there are stairs going up here. And I remember friend Billy Cramer said his office was upstairs. Come on, everyone. Looks as if we're getting nearer to the leader's hideout. You take half a dozen men and stay downstairs, Sergeant. The rest of you come with us. Very good, sir. in this room, look. Oh, yes, quite palatial. This is Kramer's room, all right. There's his microphone. Yes, but where's the leader? Uh, looks like his oxygen. Colonel Gardner! Hello, what's that? Yes? Well, up here, what is it? They've gone, sir. At the bottom of the other stairs is a proper little dandy stage. A sort of underground canal leading onto the river. 
They cleared out. I was afraid they had. Blast. Colonel Gardner. What's the trouble, Dean? There's a note here addressed to you. To me? Yes, here on this desk. What the blazes? Well, I'll be... What is it, sir? It's from Cramer. This is what he says. Dear Colonel Gardner, you appear to have found your way into my headquarters. Let us see if you can find your way out again. What the devil does he mean by that? What is the meaning of Kramer's message? Where has Kramer gone? What has he left behind? Listen to the next installment of Dick Burton, Special Agent. Dick Burton, Special Agent. With the help of Dick Barton and Snowy White, Colonel Gardner, head of MO13, has tracked down Wilhelm Kramer and his gang to a deserted tea warehouse backing on the River Thames. Colonel Gardner and his personal assistant, Gene Hunter, with a strong force of police, attack. But Kramer has escaped to the river by a secret waterway. Upstairs in Kramer's office, Gene finds something lying on Kramer's desk. Colonel Gardner? Hmm? What's the trouble, Gene? There's a note here. Addressed to you. To me? Yes. Here, on this desk. What the blazes? Well, I'll be... What is it, sir? It's from Kramer. This is what he says. Dear Colonel Gardner, you appear to have found your way into my headquarters. Let us see whether you can find your way out again. What the devil does he mean by that? It sounds as though he's left a little surprise packet behind for us. Yeah, knowing friend Willie, nothing would surprise me, sir. Hmm, thing to do is to get out of the place as soon as we can. Might be some papers here worth taking with us, shall we? Hello? What was that? Quick, quick, Captain Barton, sir. There's a perishing in sentry bomb gone off. Coming, Snowy. Stay where you are, Miss Hunter. Why? In case there's any more about to go off, silly. Where are you, Snowy? Out here, sir. Look down there. The old stairs is a mass of flames. Never seen anything get going so quick in my life. One minute everything was peaceful and quiet. Next thing I knew, the old perishing issue was alive. Come on, Snowy, back to the top again. Quick, let's see if there's any other way out. Well, Barton, we're in a tough spot, sir. We can't get down the stairs and the whole place is going up like a matchbox. I wonder if there's a fire escape on the outside of the building. You know, Inspector? I just had a look, sir. Doesn't appear to be one. Oh, well, let's have a look at the stairs again. Great heavens! We shouldn't stand a chance down there. Perhaps if we wrap something round our mouths, it might be possible just down there. Get back, Jean! Don't step on that stair. Come back here. What do you think you're doing? Blazes! There's the stairway gone. Sorry to be a bit rough, Miss Hunter. It's all right. Thanks. Well, unless we make a move. <coughs> Only one thing. <coughs> oh, curse the smoke! <coughs> Let's have a look at the windows. <coughs> this one's no good, sir. I thought as much. See, looks out on the street. But there should be a squad of police out there. Yes, that's Hillary Street. <coughs> they could get a sheet or something. Inspector, give your men a shout and tell them to have a sheet ready. Hey! Got it! Got it, baby! He's seen you. Look, he's signaling. Yes, sir! Can only just hear you! We're trapped! Can't get down! Get a sheet! Get a sheet! He'll get it all right, sir. Yes, he's, he's dashing over to the fire engines. Well, I hope he gets a move on. I don't know about you people, but I'm getting a bit hot. This place certainly burns well. How do you feel, Jean? Oh, warmish. Nothing to worry about yet. But they're bringing the rescue sheet. <coughs> Here it comes, just the job. Shout when you're ready. Ready, sir. Okay, Jean. Go on, my dear. You first. I don't want to go first. Don't, don't hang about. There's no time to waste. Oh, sorry. Well, here goes, sir. Good luck, Jean. Lady coming down! Don't worry, miss. Just jump. They'll catch you. They've been doing this for years. Never missed one yet. I'm not scared. Okay. We'll hold you on the window sill till you've got your balance. Say when you're ready yes. to jump. There you are. Ready? Off you go, then. She made it. Yeah, I got guts, that girl. <laughs> Don't waste time, chaps. This fire's getting distinctly warmer. We've all got to go the same way home. If you next, Colonel Gardner, okay? Then the inspector, then Snowy and me. No, no, after you. Sorry, no arguments. Good luck, sir. Same to you. Jump! Who 
Keep back, please. Keep back. Colonel Gardner. Look, Gene. Here come Barton and his friend Snowy. That's the lot. We're all out now. I'll keep a couple of good blokes down, you know. Good work, Snowy. And you too, Barton. Here. You'd better each have some of this. As I live, brandy. Thanks a lot, Miss Hunter. My pleasure, Mr. Barton. Here, Snowy. No, no. After you, sir. Oh, that's the stuff. <clears throat> Snowy? Oh, tar, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, that's better. Now, Colonel Gardner, to business. I told you I discovered that the other scientist, James Thurgood, is definitely in league with Kramer now, sir. Mm, I was afraid he might be from what Archie Wrangle told us. Yes, he tried to get us to join Kramer's outfit. Did he, by Joe? So I think we can forget the kidnap story. Now, what are we going to do about Kramer and his gang? I've already notified the river police. They put a cordon across the river north and south of the warehouse. But it's probably too late. Now we'll go to my car and get back to the office. Surely Kramer will take things easy for a bit, sir. I don't know. He hasn't got that formula. He badly needs it before he can work the secret weapon. I wouldn't be surprised if it's stupid, Colonel Gardner, sir. Yes, yes, what is it, Inspector? There's an urgent call radio call for you, sir. For me? Oh, well, I'll take it right away. Yes, Gardner speaking. Oh, uh, hello, sir. Uh, this is the sergeant in charge of the armed guard, sir. The, the guard you placed on Sir Archie Rangel uh, at the hospital, sir. Well, son, what is it? I brought Sir Archie to your office, sir, at ML 13. My office? In accordance with your instructions, sir. But I've given no instructions for Sir Archie to be moved from the hospital. Oh, well, excuse me, sir, but... I've got your written instructions here, sir. My written instructions? Yes, sir. Colonel Gardner. Yes, yes, what is it, Miss Hunter? Ask to speak to Sir Archie. Good idea. Hello. Hello, are you there? Yes, yes, sir. I'd like to speak to Sir Archie, if I may. But he's still unconscious, sir. Jeannie says he's still unconscious. He wasn't unconscious when I left him at the hospital last night. Don't understand it. Something fishy. The sooner we get along there, the better. Look here. Pile into the car, everybody. We've got to get back to my office. Quick. No, sir, no. No accidents today, Jack. Thank goodness for that. But there's a deputation of army blokes waiting to see you, sir, with, with a stretcher case. Ah, oh, where are they? In the ante room over there, sir. And here's a sergeant now. Right, sergeant. I'm Colonel Gardner. Good afternoon, sir. Afternoon, sergeant. What's all this about? Well, I was on duty with the guard at the hospital, sir, when we got your urgent message that the patient was wanted here. I sent no message. But you sent no message, sir, but I, I've, I've got it here. Look. Hmm. Bring Sir Archie Wrangle to War Office at once. And signed by me, eh? Yes, sir. On War Office note paper. I say it looks authentic enough. But didn't you send it, sir? I've never seen it before. Anyway, where's Sir Archie now? Just over here, sir. Snoring his head off. Come on. Let's have a look. There he is, sir. Sleeping like a newborn babe, only louder. <laughs> It's not Sir Archie. What? What? It looks very like him, but it's definitely not him. Are you sure, Miss Hunter? What do you mean, Miss? Sir Archie smoked a lot of cigarettes. I noticed his hand. There were nicotine stains in the fingers. There aren't any on this man's. No. There were stains on Sir Archie's moustache, too. Look, this man's moustache is just grey. If it's a real moustache, excuse me, sir. If the old boy's drugged, he won't feel a gentle tug on his whiskers, will he? There. <laughs> Well, I'll be jiggered. It's come off. So, it's not Sir Archie, which means... That karma has got him. Ring up the hospital, Jean. See what you can find out. Right away, sir. Everything now depends on whether this Sir Archie can be made to talk, and I don't think it'll be difficult. No, no. Wait a minute, Barton. What we've got to find out first, and find out fast, is where the devil is the real Sir Archie. Pretty obvious, I should think, sir. This is plan two of Willie Kramer with a vengeance. He's got the second scientist who invented the secret weapon, and he'll force him to give him the antidote. Once he's got that, nothing will stop Kramer. You'll see. Ah, Jean. What's happened to the hospital? The worst, I'm afraid, sir. They found the surgeon unconscious in a corner with a nasty head wound. Why hasn't this been reported before? They've only just discovered it. Apparently there was a notice outside his door, do not disturb. Quite a usual thing when he's engaged on research. And Sir Archie Wrangle? No trace, sir. Mm, bad show. Well, son, get your men to carry this Sir Archie into the other room. Very good, sir. That's it. Thanks, Sarge. Into his room. Into his room over here. He's obviously drugged. But when he recovers consciousness, I'll have a word with him. If you want any help, let me know. Uh, excuse me, Captain Barton, sir. Yes, what is it, Snowy? Well, I took the liberty of helping myself to a few of the things in this Sir Archie's pockets while he was being put in there. Mm. Here they are. Well, good idea, Snowy. Let's have them on this table. Huh? Uh -huh. Yeah, some money, an old bill, 
Diary? That's a funny thing for a chappie in his line of business to keep. Uh, will you take a look through it, Miss Hunter? Okay, Mr. Barton. <laughs> this formality is a bit wearing. Yes, I think we might drop the ceremony. It suits me. Jean? Hello? What? This diary's full of nothing but details of money drawn and spent. But there is the name of a house written in pencil on the flyleaf. Lodge Hall. Funny sort of a name. Any address? No. What have you found, Snowy? Well, uh, only this bill for potatoes, of all things. A bill? From a greengrocer? Yes, but not much clue there, though. It's, it's made out to Smith. How many potatoes? Oh, two sacks. Two sacks? That's quite a large order. Is there a name and address on the billhead? Yes, the name of the greengrocer and his phone number. That's it, then. Yes, Jean, I see what you mean. The greengrocer made a member of the customer. Better still, he may have delivered the potatoes. Where's the nearest phone? Out here, I'll show you. Come on, Snowy. It's a chance, anyway. Yes, but I hope that nice old man, the real Sir Archie, isn't going through the mill. Let's talk it over quietly, my dear Sir Archie. Why not be sensible? You are completely in my power. I may tell you at once, I am determined to have your formula. Whatever steps it should be necessary for me to take. You'll get no formula from me. You should not be quite so positive, Sir Archie. Far stronger men than you have begun by being awkward and ended, well, one way or another. You're sure you feel safe enough with me? After all, I've only got a broken collarbone and a broken leg. I might attack you. My dear and... Angle, your falling down the lift shaft was an accident which no one regretted more than I. Gardner should have had that little experience, not you. All the more reason for helping us, Wrangle, you fool. With our weapon, the three of us can control the world. I never liked you very much, James Thurgood. I respected your brains, though. Now I have neither liking nor respect for you. We're wasting valuable time on him, Kramer. He was always a fool. I would rather have cooperation than antagonism, my dear sir. Well, you won't get any cooperation from Wrangle. It was as much as I could ever do to get that, even when we were working together. That was because instinctively, Thurgood, I recognized you for what you have proved to be. Uh, no! Uh, you, you cowardly swine. Why not give us the necessary information, Wrangle? <laughs> It would save so much time and trouble. You won't get away with this. Ah, but I assure you, we shall. Gardner has no idea where you are. Now, come along. Be sensible. You're wasting your time. I'm beginning to grow a little bored, Sir Archie. So we may have to use some other way to make you talk. You fool, Wrangle. Can't you see we intend to have the formula? Not for me. For the last time, are you going to be sensible? I warn you, Thurgood. Any more of this torture, and you will be sorry. You're not in a position to make threats. I'm warning you. You won't get away with it. I'll repay this last half hour if I have to wait a lifetime. I've heard enough from you, Wrangle. Hold his arm, will you, Kramer? Ah. <laughs> now, will you talk? <laughs> Kramer, quick. He's, he's got me. Let him go, you old fool. Let go. <laughs> right, then. Take a back up the... You fool, Thurgood. He had my throat. With one hand. A crippled old man and you can't deal with him. He had my throat. Oh, stop whimpering, Thurgood. We must get this information out of Wrangle and quick. There's only one thing left, Kraber. The drug? Yes. He won't talk any other way. We'll have to give him the truth drug. In his weakened state, he should react quickly and favorably. If I administer it now, just before he returns to consciousness... It won't have time to wear off before we question him. How long will it take? Oh, not long, not long at all. Pass me that needle, will you, Crabber? Thank you. There. Ah, ah, ah. What will happen to Sir Archie? Will the truth drug work? Is Colonel Gardner on his way? Listen to the next installment of Dick Barton, Special Agent. Dick Barton, Special Agent. A new 
new secret weapon of indescribable power has been invented by two British scientists. This weapon is now in the hands of Wilhelm Kramer and his gang. So are the two scientists. The one, James Thurgood, has joined Kramer of his own free will. But the other, Sir Archie Wrangle, has been kidnapped by Kramer and taken to his new hideout. Here, Kramer and Thurgood begin to torture Sir Archie Wrangle in an endeavor to obtain the secret formula. They must get this information out of Wrangle. And quick, there's only one thing left, Kramer. The drug? Yes, he won't talk any other way. We'll have to give him the truth drug. In his weakened state, he should react quickly and favorably. If I administer it now, just before he returns to consciousness, it won't have time to wear off before we question him. How long will it take? Oh, not long, not long at all. Uh, pass me that needle, will you, Kramer? Thank you. There. Ah! ah! Uh, my hand! Look, my hand! All right, Kramer, don't move. What? Why, it's friend Barton again. Oh, no, he's shooting, sir. Look at my hand. Lucky it wasn't your head. <laughs> he's bleeding fast. Oh, shut up, Thurgood. I'm afraid you've upset Mr. Thurgood, my dear Bart. Take a look at Sir Archie, Jean. Yes, of course. Snowy, just make sure our friends aren't armed. I will. Now then, up with your hand. <laughs> now, that's lovely. And what do you hope to gain by this, Barton? This house is full of my men. That's all right. The place is completely surrounded, Crowder. <laughs> if I remember rightly, you had me completely surrounded in the tea warehouse, Barton. How is he, Jean? Looks as though he's coming round. He's been knocking him about, though. Look at these marks on his face. Your angle was so obstinate, Miss Hunter. You see what I mean, Barton? Tell them to go away. At once. Really, Barton? And I must If you say, don't tell them to go away at once, I shall shoot you in the stomach, both of you, now. No, 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 Kramer, no, tell them to go away. Tell them, Kramer. I warned you. Please, uh, not so hasty. At once, Kramer. All right, my friends. Everything is quite all right. Get on with your duties. We heard a shot. It's quite all right. Don't worry. Carry on with your work. That satisfy you, Mr. Barton? Saved you both from a nasty tummy ache anyway. Now, Snowy, if you'll do a spot of tying up... Right, sir. While Jean gets on the phone to Colonel Gardner's office, I take it we may use your phone? Over here, Jean. All right, Dick, leave this to me. I don't like it at all, Hans, not at all. But the leader said it was all right, I heard There's him. something very odd going on in that room. That's all right, Professor. The leader and that scientist fellow have been giving the old boy the words. Yes, but they wouldn't shoot at him. I know. We'll send Blom down to the garden to have a look in at the window. Fine, now go yourself, Professor. No, it's a bit too dark outside in the garden. Besides, I might stop a bullet. But Blom, <laughs> Blom is different. Yes. He may be a half-wit, but he's strong enough to deal with six normal men. Blom! Blom! <laughs> ah, listen, Blom. The leader is in the big room. The room with the lights, you know? Good. The leader is in danger. Go down to the garden, look in through the window, and find out what is wrong. Quickly, quickly. Blom, the leader is in danger. Good. If anyone is hurting the leader, Blom will tear them to pieces. We'll soon know what. Any luck on the phone, Jean? They think Colonel Gardner's just got back. They're finding him. Useful instrument, the telephone, Mr. Barton. Very. How are you getting on, Snowy? Uh, just got James Thurgood nicely tied up, so now we'll start on friend Willie here. Why all this roping, my dear Barton? After all, you hold all the trump cards. You say the house is surrounded. You're too slippery a customer, Kramer. Or would it be more truthful to say, Barton, that you three are here alone, in view of the fact that you are only just now notifying Gardner of the position? You talk too much, Kramer. I think you better be gagged as well as tied. Hello? Hello? Is that you, Colonel? Yes? The Colonel's on the phone, Dick. Jean here. Yes. Hello, Jean. What's the news? We're at Lodge Hall. You know the address? Yes. Yes, and we urgently need... Hello? 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 What's the matter? The line's gone dead. Hello? Hello? Where is the door now? So you are here alone, Bart. And it's late at night. Very unwise. We shall see about that. At least you and Thurgood are at the wrong end of a gun, Kramer. Why was the telephone cut? Unless someone in the house suspects. Oh. Oh. <laughs> the lights have gone out. Don't move, Jean. Or you, Snowy. Right, I'm holding Kramer. Now listen, Kramer. Shout for your men to put on the lights again. I didn't tell them to put out the lights. I want the lights on again quick and I'm past fooling. Go on, sir. Shoot him in the stomach. I most certainly shall, and I mean that. Keep talking, Jean, so that I know you're over there. Don't worry about me. Colonel Gardner's got our message. He'll be here any time now. And I'm not afraid of the dark. 
<laughs> What's that, sir? That, that heavy breathing sound. It isn't rankle. Keep talking, Dean. I'm quite all right, Dick. Don't worry about me. I'm perfectly all right. I'll keep on talking, just as you say. Dean! Dean! What, Kramer? You asked for it. No, don't, don't. I'll tell them. Professor! Hans! Blom! Put the lights on. Do you hear? Put the lights on at once. Ah, that's better. Now we can see. Where's Miss Hunter, sir? She's vanished. Yes, but not for long. Listen, Kramer, tell your men at once to bring her back. Otherwise, I shoot both you and Thurgood. Oh, my dear. Bob. I said at once, Kramer. I shall count three and then fire. <laughs> oh, very melodramatic. Surely. One. Oh, be sensible, my dear Bart. Two. <laughs> he means it, Kramer, you fool. No. Three. I am sure. Oh, oh. That was only the fleshy part of your leg, Kramer. Next time it'll be your kneecap. Kramer, don't be a fool. One. <laughs> Professor, Hans, Mom, bring back the girl. Quickly. Two. Quickly, you fools. Bring her here. You'll pay for this, button. Oh, my lord, sir, look. Look, he, he's got Miss Hunter by the throat. She's unconscious, sir. Kramer, tell him to put her down, you swine. Put her down. Put her down, Blum. Mr. Barton, listen to me. Who the... Do not shoot the leader, Barton. Uh, sounds like that professor bloke again, sir. The man in the Omberg hat and the Macintosh who we met that first day. Are you listening, Barton? If you shoot the leader, Blum will break the girl's neck. On the other hand, if you shoot Blum, I shall shoot the girl. I suggest you drop your gun and take your orders from me. Oh, looks like he's got the whip hand, sir. If I were you, Barton, I'd obey the professor. <laughs> if you look at Blum, you'll see he's getting carried away by it all. Violence of any kind affects him. He's quite likely to break the girl's neck without knowing it. He doesn't really know his own strength. Blazes. I could put a bullet through your stomach, Kramer. In which case, Barton, the girl dies immediately, and you and your companion and Rango die later. I think you had better be advised, Barton. If he's covering us with a gun, why doesn't he shoot us, sir? Because, my good fellow, friend Barton is holding the leader so tightly that any bullet aimed at Barton might conceivably hit our leader, a contingency I am anxious at all costs to avoid. Drop your gun, Barton. <laughs> Limey, Limey, look at the big fella, sir. He, he'll choke, Miss Hunter. All right, Kramer. You win this hand. There's my gun. Tell that devil to loose the girl. Lamb, put down the girl. Put her down on the floor. I think she's still alive, but she seems to have fainted. Now, come along in, Professor. You did very nicely. Keep Mr. Barton covered. I should like very much to shoot Mr. Barton. If you wouldn't mind, I dislike him intensely. So do I, my dear professor. But I feel we may need him for experimental purposes in the near future. A good idea, Kramer. We must try the secret weapon on someone. Why not Barton and co? Untie my hands, professor. Oh, uh, a pleasure, Mr. Thurgood. Better let me go now, Barton. Uh, there, there you are. Thank you. Quite a nasty little wound on my leg. I'm sure you're going to be very sorry about it eventually. In the meantime, Oop. that and that Oop. is something on account. My cowardly lot of rats, sir. Never I mind, would... Snowy. Our turn will come, old son. Let's have a look at poor old Jean. Don't move, Barton, or I shall be forced Oh, to... shoot and be damned. Hello, Jean, old girl. You're feeling better. Right, I'll... Shall... Don't... Don't shoot, Professor. Don't spoil this affecting reunion. What happened? An unpleasant gentleman tried to choke you. Oh, as I remember, I did my best to shout. Oh, Dick Cromer's got a gun. Yes, he's leading by a short head at the moment. Not for long, though. Colonel Gardner, is I he... certainly hope so. Yes, we all expect that Colonel Gardner will be on his way with loads of police constables. But I am afraid that once again, Plan 2 will go into operation. Call it Plan 3, if you like. A new hideout. And Colonel Gardner will find that the birds have flown. There's no time to lose, Cromer. Don't worry, Professor. I think we shall be safely on the way before our friend Gardner can do very much. The cars are already outside. Good. Get the men together, then, and tell them to be ready for an immediate getaway. Plan three. Of course. Plan three. Plan three. Plan three. Listen, Professor, huh? you will take Barton and the girl and Barton's companion in one car. Yes, sir. And I myself shall take James Thurgood together with Sir Archie Wrangle. Listen, Karma, Wrangle is in no fit condition to be moved from this room. You can see it's sheer cruelty. Be quiet, Barton. For humanity's sake, Karma. Oh, I said be quiet. Now then, Thurgood and Blum, you two get Wrangle into our car. Right, come, Blum. 
Do take care. The old man's quiet. Why, why, you brave man, friend Kramer. Not afraid to strike any woman, providing she can't hit back. Okay, Jean, Kramer will have that one back with interest. Don't bother about me, Dick. It's that poor old man being dragged about. No good appealing to their better natures, my dear girl. They haven't got any. Now, listen, Professor. It's quite conceivable that Colonel Gardner may arrive too soon or may pass us on the way, recognize us, and come in pursuit. If so, the rear car, that's the one that you will be in, Professor, will swerve at the first corner or fork and take a different route. But why? I, I don't understand. So that Gardner and his men will follow the rear car, whilst our car proceeds on its way undisturbed. That is our usual arrangement. It is unlikely, Professor, that Gardner will recognize our cars unless some outcry is made by the prisoners in your car. You will take adequate steps to prevent this. But of course. Just what those steps are, Professor, I leave to your inventive mind. And I'll bet little pasty face can think up something nice and tasty, too. I expect so. All ready, sir. Shall I go to wrangle in the car? Good. Well, I leave you to make your own arrangements with your prisoners. Their hands are tied? Yeah, good. Don't be long, Professor. Now, uh, listen, Barton and all of you. I have here a claw. Just a rather beautifully made little claw, you see, made of steel, exquisitely made. So what? I shall not gag any of you, but if circumstances arise which tempt any of you to cry out, well... Well? If the lady calls out, you, my dear Barton, will taste my claw down the side of your face. If you or your friend cry out, why, then the little lady will feel its caress. It's very sharp, very sharp indeed. It would mark anyone for life. Come along, let us adjourn to the cars. There goes the leader's car. Good. So, we're all in this car, are we? Yes. I'll come in beside you. Sit facing you. That'll be better. Off we go. I think we might have one of the windows open. A little night air, my dear Barton, will no doubt help us all to cool off. But you will all three remember my warning. Little Dick, coming behind us, Colonel Gardner's car. It's drawing out and passing us. Come on, Dad! Right, Mr. Buck. I warned you what would happen. Dick. Dick, I forgot. Oh, Dick. All right. Quite all right. You dirty swine. If only my hands were free, I'm I... so sorry, Dick. I shouted without thinking. Good thing. Blast. They've seen us in the other car. They're turning. Faster, driver. Faster. Right. Give the signal to the leader in front. Faster. Swing off at the next fork or corner as soon as we can be sure they're following. Ah, the leader's pulling away. Good, good. Now, driver, at the next corner, swerve right. Now! Now, as fast as you can. Just a minute. Yes, good. They're following us. Fast! Look, driver, you fool. Slow down. I know this road. There's a devil of a drop and the road narrows. If you meet anything... Faster! 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 Oh, Never mind my face. It's this car that worries me. Look out, driver. Look out. Gee, mine! <laughs> Have Barton and Jean been injured? Has Kramer escaped? If so, where to? Listen to the next instalment of Dick Barton, Special Agent. Dick Barton, Special Agent. Wilhelm Kramer and James Thurgood have set out in a car for their new hideout, taking with them Sir Archie Wrangle as their prisoner. A second car carries the professor, with Dick, Jean and Snowy as his captives. Colonel Gardner sets out in pursuit, and on the way his car passes them. Jean cries out for help, and the professor, as punishment, strikes Dick's face with a steel claw. Gardner gives chase again, and the car with Dick, Jean, Snowy and the professor swings off the route after giving a signal to Kramer that they are being followed. Faster! Swing off at the next fork or corner as soon as we can be sure they're following. Ah, the leader's pulling away. Good, good. Now, driver, at the next corner, swerve right. Now! 
Now, as fast as you can. Just a minute. Yes, good. They're following us. Blast! Look, driver, you fool, slow down. I know this road. There's a devil of a drop and the road narrows. If you meet anything... Faster! Faster! Oh, dear. Never mind my face, it's this car that worries me. Look out, driver, look out! Jean, mine! <laughs> They've gone over the edge, Inspector. Come on. There's not much of a drop here. They may be all right. Leave some of your men to look after this other car. You must have met them head on. And the driver of the car with Jean inside it must have swerved to avoid it. The road was too narrow, and over he went. Well, this car's all right. Never had a chance. The other bloke was coming along too fast. That's all right. Get them out of the way, Inspector. Listen. What's that? Gardner. Don't hear quick. Martin's alive, anyway. Come on. Bring torches. Gardner. Coming! Coming right down! Bit of a climb! Be as quick as we can! Jean, you sure you're okay? I think so. Sore here and there. What about Snowy? Oh, another bruise on my napper, but apart from that, everything seems all right. The driver of the car's had it, judging by the angle of his neck. Oh. Just a minute. Yes, he won't trouble us any further. The professor seems to have vanished completely. Oh, no, he hasn't. I saw him clearing off in a hurry while I was trying to get you out. Took me a moment or two to get my hands untied, otherwise I'd have got him. He won't have got far. He was limping badly. When Gardner arrives, tell him I'm off after the dear professor. Dick! Yes? Don't take any silly risks. Ha, never do. You do! Don't worry too much. Back in two ticks. Oh, there's a colonel climbing down. This way, sir. Hello, Snowy. You all right? Yeah. Front on me, Conk. Nothing to worry about. And Jean's okay, too. Oh, thank heavens you're safe, Jean. Great Scott, what a relief. Where's Barton? Chasing a mad professor. I'm afraid Crown and Thurgood have got clean away, sir. What? I thought... They were in the car in front. As soon as you began following us, our car swerved away from the route to take you off the scent. <laughs> Certainly did, too. What about Wrangle? They've got him in the car with them. Blast! Now we're as far as ever from Kramer's new hideout and... No! Here's a clue! And Dick's got him tight! Here you I are, big you crowd beauty. Here's Colonel Gardner. Great heavens, Barton. What have you done to your face? Our friend, the professor here, had a bit of fun with it. This is the instrument concerned, this little steel claw. Very useful for spoiling people's good looks. You'd better get yourself patched up. That's all right. Let's get moving, sir. Come on. Back along the route we came. Get to the police station and look at a few maps. And above all, question this professor here. I told you I know nothing. Nothing. You'll soon find that out. Come on. All we want to know is, where is Wilhelm Kramer now? Now, hurry. Hurry, for heaven's sake. Hurry, very good. Surely we're safe enough here. And you say even the professor doesn't know the location of this house? He doesn't. But there's still a chance that Barton may find some clue. Why this sudden anxiety about Barton? I don't like the way he keeps cropping up in this affair and keeping us on the run like this. Well, we don't want to run any further. Precisely. We haven't anywhere else anyway. We can get out of the country. We still have the plane. Yes. And the weapon. And once we're safely away into Europe, we can dictate our own terms. Mm. Agreed. So the sooner we get Wrangle to talk, the better. You've got the drug ready? Yes. He's still unconscious. Good. Now, a prick from the hypodermic. There. <laughs> now, as soon as he comes round, we must fire questions at him before the effects of the drug wear off. Well, where, where am I? It, it's all right, Wrangle, old hmm? boy. This is Thurgood, Jimmy Thurgood. You remember? I, I remember. Is it working? Looks like it. Uh, you remember our secret weapon, the one we invented together, Wrangle? I remember. One man in control of the weapon could destroy the whole population of a complete city without... Yes, 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 but <laughs> listen, Wrangle. Are you listening? I am listening. The operator of the weapon must be protected from its rays. Yes, I invented an antidote. Yes, indeed, you did. Can you remember what the formula of that antidote was? Yes, I can remember. What... Was it? The formula for the preparation of the antidote is as follows. You must do as I tell you. Now then, Professor, uh, I, all we want to know uh, is Kramer's latest hideout. But I've no idea, I swear to you, Come I've on. no idea at all. I've never been oh, there. Yes, I have. only know the secret weapon is stored there now, and it's near an aerodrome. That's all I know. Mm. 
what do you think, Barton? Well, he may be telling the truth, but I think just to make sure. Hmm? Listen, Professor. Hmm? If we don't stop Kramer, millions of people will die horribly. I am therefore prepared to adopt your own methods to make you talk. I am prepared to go to any lengths, any lengths, to stop Wilhelm Kramer. Yes, I will even use your own claw no, on you. No, no, Barton, you can't. I can, and I will. I told you all I know. It's a house near an aerodrome. How do you know that? I heard Kramer talking about a plane. That doesn't necessarily mean the house is near an aerodrome, does it? Kramer may have his own plane. He has. Oh, he has, has he? Yes, and I heard that the garden backs onto one of the runways of an aerodrome. I see, very convenient. Now, perhaps you'll tell me which aerodrome? I swear I don't know. I swear I... He doesn't know, Barton. No, if he did, he'd squeal all right with pasty face. He's petrified. You can I see... I just had an idea. Well, let's have it. We could do with one or two bright ideas just now, Jean. This house backs onto an airfield. So the professor says. It does. I've told you it does. Well, Kramer hasn't been in this country such a long time, so he must have bought the house fairly recently. What are you driving at, Jean? Look at this map. In the direction which Kramer was going in the car when we turned off... There could be only one place he was making for, Halley Airdrome. How do you make that out? He may be making for Yorkshire or Scotland I'm or anywhere. I'm assuming that his house isn't too far away from London. I think you can help us with that one, Professor. I think that's right. Why? Because on one or two occasions, Kramer visited the house where the secret weapon was hidden. And he'd go during the morning and sometimes be back in the late afternoon. That rules out Yorkshire and Scotland. Anyway, go on, Jean. Well, Halley Airdrome is the only one in the direction he was making for. And not far either. So that's where his house is, near Halley. But I don't see why... Just a minute, sir. Kramer takes a house... A big house, presumably, if he's got to hide a plane in the grounds. He takes it fairly recently. It backs onto an airfield. Yes, Jean, of course. We tried the estate agents in Hellion District and tried to find the house that fits the bill. That's it. Jolly good idea. Wish I'd thought of it myself. Well, even girls can think occasionally, you know. Yes, but the occasions are so rare. Oh, but... right, all right. Anyway, Snow, you take care of pasty face here. You uh, betcha. Now, uh, come uh, along. Jean and I'll get phone numbers and fish house agents out of bed. <laughs> I'll bet they'll be tickled pink at this time of the morning. And don't forget, Barton, <laughs> this time keep me posted before taking any drastic action. We want to be certain of getting Kramer before we give him any hint that we're on his trail. If we find a house, we'll leave Snowy on guard and get in touch with you right away, sir. Meantime, I'll send along reinforcements to the police station at Halley. You'll pick them up there. They'll be mobile, so there won't be any harm done if Halley isn't the right place. I've got a feeling it is the right place, sir. Well, let's hope you're right. Cheero, and good hunting. Well, seems like a race between us and old Kramer now, doesn't it? And the best man's got to win. Now, come along, Professor. I I said come along. I'd give a copper or two to know where friend Willie is right now. And just what he's doing. Eh? Is it finished? Yes, I think so. If the formula was the right one, then this is the antidote. And we can operate the weapon in perfect safety now. Hmm? Yes, if the truth drug really has brought out the truth. You mean the wrangle may have pretended to be under the influence of the drug and given us the wrong information? Yes. The only way of really finding out... Is by trying out the secret weapon on someone protected by the antidote. Precisely. You mean... Trying it out on Wrangle himself, of course. Just what I was thinking. The ideal arrangement, of course, would be to have the weapons raised directed at two persons. One, Sir Archie Wrangle, protected by the preparation made from his formula, and the other, unprotected. <laughs> Splendid, my dear Krava. Not only that. If Sir Archie Wrangle has to face the weapons raised using the antidote we have prepared from his formula you may be sure he will be anxious that it is indeed the right formula. Yes. Why the indecision? Knowing Wrangle, he might persist in giving us misinformation, even though it meant that he himself would suffer death and mutilation. The man's a fool. In that case, he looks like being a blind and mutilated fool. Ah, but so does the operator of the weapon. Yes. I think we had better give Blom a little instruction in the handling of the weapon. Ah. Then we can give him the privilege of being the first to use it. And the other victim? I was just wondering. Now, if only we still had Bart. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> We've run him to earth, sir. You have? Good show, Barton. So the house agents found you a house. They did. It's Ashwell Court. Ashwell Court. Yes, and it backs onto Halley Airfield. We took a look at it through field glasses. I'd even spotted Blom in the drive. Blom? The half as strong as an ox, employed by friend Willie to do all the dirty jobs. We also noticed a big shed at the back of the house. Probably got the plane in it. Yes. So the sooner we surround the place with police, the better. I don't know, sir. We've got to be very careful. At the very first sign of any activity from us, Kramer will be into that plane and out of the country. Now, if we don't want to frighten him into buzzing off... Most certainly don't. Then I think we should park our reinforcements somewhere outside, Halley. I agree. 
Jean? Yes, sir. Get Operation Halley underway at once. Only make it Operation Outside Halley. <laughs> the inspector's in the next room, sir. I'll tell him straight away. Now, Barton. Oh, by the way, where's Snowy? Well, we've left him down there, keeping an eye on the house. Is that a good idea? They may spot him. I've told him to keep out of sight and report to us here by phone if there should be any movements of a suspicious nature, particularly if there seems to be any activity around that large shed. Well, now, sir, we're all ready for action. Yes, but there's only one thing worries me. It's easy for us to send in a strong body of police and troops armed to the hilt... But if Kramer and Thurgood have the weapon working by now, well, they'll direct it at our men at the very first sight of them. And we're sunk. Yes. I've got it. Somebody must go into that house, find out if it's safe to launch an attack, and then give the necessary signal for the attack to be made. Who on earth could possibly do that? I could. Don't be absurd. They know you. They know me as I am now, but with some form of disguise and an innocent-looking excuse to get inside the grounds, say, a greengrocer's van or something? Yes, and once you're inside... Make a beeline for the secret weapon, or make sure it's safely out of reach for long enough. No, no, it's certain death for you. Not at all, 50-50 chance. But I'd want someone with me, someone with plenty of guts. He could drive the van and be ready to help me, or alternatively get out quickly to warn you. Do you honestly think you'd stand a chance? Of course. Have you got a good man to go with me? Just the very chap. Jock Anderson. Jock Anderson. 51st Highland Div. Sergeant. Infantry. Sounds all right, but... Uh... Did some work with my men very recently. Very sound fellow. Just a second. Yes, sir? Jean, is Jock Anderson about anywhere? Yes, he's here in the outer office with me. Just come back from that job in the bank robbery. Oh, yes, of course. How did they get on? Of course, his gang. Jock's a bit beaten up, but he's all right. <laughs> he always is. <laughs> yes, I know. Will you ask him to come in and see me right away? You want a joke? See what you think, Barton. Might be an idea. Hello, sir. You want to see me? Yes, Jock. Meet Dick Barton. Dick, Jock Anderson, I was telling you about. How are you, Jock? Mr. Barton. Hello. Excuse me, sir. It's Snowy White on the phone urgently. He wants to speak to Mr. Barton. For you, Dick. It's Snowy. For me? Hello? Captain Barton, sir. Quick. I... <laughs> what is it, Snowy? Hello, Snowy. Snowy. What the... What's the matter? He gave a sort of gasp, and the line went dead. What has happened to Snowy White? Has Kramer got him? Will Kramer act at once? Listen to the next installment of Dick Barton, Special Agent. Dick Barton, Special Agent. Dick Barton, with Gene Hunter and Snowy White, has discovered the whereabouts of Kramer's new hideout, a house backing onto Halley Aerodrome in which he keeps a plane and the secret weapon. Leaving Snowy on lookout, Dick and Gene return to Colonel Gardner's office at MO13, there to plan the attack. Here he meets, for the first time, Jock Anderson, an ex-sergeant in the Highland Light Infantry who volunteers to help. The plans are almost laid when... For you, Dick, it's Snowy. For me? Hello? What is it, Snowy? Hello, Snowy! Snowy! What the... What's the matter? He gave a sort of gasp, and the line went dead. Snowy White? Yes, I don't like the sound of that. What precise instructions did you give Snowy? We left him guarding the house, as I told you, watching any movements Kramer might make. Told him to ring up in the event of anything happening. Did he manage to say anything on the phone? No, he just said, Captain Barton, sir, quick. Then he gave a kind of choking gasp, and the line went dead. Where'd he phone from? That's the trouble, I expect. The only phone handy was a public call box nearly opposite the entrance to Kramer's house. You think he was spotted by one of Kramer's men? Looks like it. If they saw him and recognized him, you can bet they'd never let him phone. But if they've harmed old Snowy. Who is Snowy, sir? Captain Barton's right hand. Man. Ex-sergeant oh. like yourself, Jock, and a grand bloke to have around in a scrap. Kramer's got him. That means he knows where on his trail bar. Which makes everything very much more urgent. Yes, we'd better make a plan of attack. We've got a large-scale map of the district in the next room. I'll get Gene to bring it in. Jock, if you're game to come along with me to Kramer's place, just the two of us, that's the best bet. I'm game for anything, Mr. Barton. We've Barton. got about a 50-50 chance of getting out again alive. Pretty good odds these days. Count me up. Good man. Now then, here's the map. Spread it out, Gene. Right. There's the house. Marked quite clearly, backing right onto the airfield. 
If you could have your reinforcements ready along this road, sir, here, yeah. they'd be quite away from the house and well covered by trees. In cars? Yes, they'd better be mobile. We might want them in a devil of a hurry. What sort of signal should we give? We'll take a very pistol. Jock, you can have it in the van. Right. Use it if we can't get out again to contact them before they make the attack. Well, get out to us if you possibly can after you've found the information we need about the secret weapon. Don't worry. We shan't stay in Kramer's house one minute longer than is absolutely necessary. Now... How exactly do you propose to get into the house without arousing suspicion? Have to use some form of disguise for a start. Oh, that clawed face of yours doesn't help. On the contrary, Jean, it should help. Kramer doesn't know that the mad professor used his claw on my face. That's true. And with a moustache and a muffler... Jock, here's a complete stranger to them. We should be able to get inside all right, but it's finding the information we want and then getting out of the place again that's going to be the trouble. Exactly. Yeah. You see, we need some reasonable excuse for going right inside the house, not mm. men of the grounds. Greengrocer or coal man would hardly give you any reason for going inside. Besides, we shouldn't go unless Kramer had placed an order. No. Just a minute. I think I've got it. Kramer's house is on the phone. Is it? Yes, I noticed that this morning. How does that help? If we could find out the name of the previous tenant of the house, Kramer's only had it about nine months, so the estate agent said. Yeah? Well, there's quite a waiting list these days for new phones. But you say he's already on the phone. He sir. is, but there's nothing to stop the previous tenant of the house having ordered another phone to be installed for the bedroom or any other room, for that matter. I get well, you. Well, owing to the long waiting list, it's only just been possible to send men along to install the new phone. So in you go with your little GPO van, plainly marked post office telephones, mm -hmm. pop inside the house with a phone, check up the position of the secret weapon, sabotage it if you can, then give the signal for the attack. And die nobly in the attempt, I suppose. What? No fear. Colonel Gardner, they haven't got an earthly and you know it. They might get a warning out to you. They might stop the weapon from being used. But what mercy will Kramer show them once they've given the alarm? My dear girl. I'm not your dear anything. I know, but look, Jean, we may quite easily go in the house, sabotage the weapon and walk out again without Kramer knowing anything at all about it. Pigs might fly. What's the alternative, Jean? I'll tell you the alternative. We all attack in force, Kramer sees us coming, starts using the weapon on us and on anything else that happens to get in the way of the rays, including women and children. He's right, Jean. I've been wondering why we couldn't have just a bash at the place. Now I've begun to see. So the sooner we start off, the better. Any news about Snowy yet, Jean? No. A plain clothesman is going round to the house. He'll phone us right away. I'll arrange the telephone people to obtain what information we require regarding the previous tenants, fix up the van, and provide you with all the necessary credentials. Meanwhile, come along, Jock. We'll see what the makeup right. department can do for us. You won't need anything, as they don't know you, but a walrus moustache wouldn't do me any harm. <laughs> Try room 32 on the next floor above, Barton. They'll fix you up with pretty well everything you want. Tell them I sent you. You'd better get some plaster of that face of yours, too. Really, you look frightful, Dick. That's all right. Anything that spoils my manly beauty helps to disguise me. A face like yours is a disguise in itself. Now, is that nice? Come on, Jock, let's turn ourselves into post office employees. <laughs> <laughs> Always happy when there's a spot of trouble in the offing, isn't he? Do you think he'll come through all right? Well, if anybody could, I'd say he could. He's not short of guts, anyway. No. But Crumb will kill him this time, sir, if he's found out. Not like you, to look on the black side, Jean. I know, but... But what? Oh, I don't know. Very lucid. Come on, let's get Barton fixed up with the GPO and lay on these reinforcements. Oh. Hello? Alley Police Station here. Is that Colonel Gardner's office? Yes. Well, I've got a message about a Mr. Snowy White. Oh. What did they say? Well, apparently he left the house he was in to use the telephone and he hasn't returned. I see. Right, thank you very much. Well, uh, should I speak to the colonel himself? Uh, just a sec. You don't want to speak to Harley Police Station, do you, sir? No. Right. That's all, thank you. Uh, right, uh, very good, miss. Thank you. Thanks very much. Well? Snowy White left the house to use the phone. He said that to the people in the house, did he? Yes. He didn't come back. Hmm. So he can take it as pretty definite that Kramer's got him. Which means that Kramer's likely to act at any moment. Then the sooner we act, the better. Uh, well, very good. Well. No use being impatient, Kramer. Blom isn't what you'd call a particularly apt pupil. Surely he knows by now just what to do. Heavens, it's simple enough. It's simple, yes. But so is Blom. Blom. <laughs> You understand what the man says? <laughs> there are two levers. Uh, Don't call them levers. He doesn't know what a lever is. You uh, must admit that it isn't too easy. Uh, Look, Blom. Uh, first you switch that over, uh, sir. Uh, uh, then you pull that little piece of metal. Uh, so. You see? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> then you press that switch. That one there. Be careful, Dagwood, for heaven's sake. That's all right. The ray doesn't come into operation until that third switch is pulled down. The generator begins with the second lever, but the rail is starts with the third. Well, don't press the third lever. No. 
But Blom will press the third lever, won't you, Blom? <laughs> then, Blom, after you've pressed the third lever, what do you do then? <laughs> That's the idea. You switch it off, like that. Oh, I really think he got it this time, Kramer. Yeah, about time, too. Better prepare him with the antidote now. Yes. Uh, this is for you, Blom. <laughs> Bring him around. Come along, you. Uh, trying to speak to me, didn't he? Yeah. I wish he had somebody else to try it on, too. Someone without the antidote. Then we could have a complete trial. It would be better. We could try it on Rango. First with the antidote, then if he was all right, we could try it on him without the antidote. You filthy swine, have you no decent feelings? No spark of humanity? Not very much at the moment, Rango. Come along, Blom. (laughs) I assume we shall be quite safe, though. I shall fix the machine so that it can only be pointed in Rango's direction, but we shall keep out of the room. But don't you realize, you fools, that although you point the machine at me, the rays will penetrate my body and the walls of this house and everything else for miles, so that any human beings who happen to be in line with the rays will suffer. So long as Thurgood and I are not in the line of fire, so to speak, we don't worry very much. You'll (laughs) roast in hell for this! Possibly. But you look like being there first by some considerable time, my dear Rangle. Uh, Blom is ready now, Kramer. Go on. Get out! I gave strict instructions I was not to be disturbed. Too late, put out. Uh, why? Well, hello. I thought I recognized him, sir. He was just going to use the phone. <laughs> but of course you recognized him, of course. Mr. White, isn't it? Snowy White. Oh, a lot of fuss and palaver just because I wanted to ring up a bit of stuff, isn't it? And this means that Barton knows where we are, Kramer. Not necessarily. He didn't give any message over the phone, sir. We stopped him just as he was going to speak. Good work. Yeah, they wouldn't have done that if it hadn't been four to one. If this man was watching the house, Kramer, it must mean that Barton will be here at any moment. Uh, <coughs> Barton and me have a party company. Edwards, we have. Indeed. Well, how interesting. Tell me more. Well, I don't fancy being mixed up with this, uh, how do you do, any longer. Between you and me. So you came down here to spy on us all by yourself? Well, I didn't want to spy on you. Didn't know you were here. How should I? Don't talk like a fool, Mr. Wright. You're lying and you know it. Which gives me some cause for alarm. Why? If White here tells us Barton doesn't know where we are, then the chances are that Barton does know. In fact, he's probably on his way with reinforcements. Then let's get away quickly. On the other hand, if Mr. White's phone message was interrupted, and in fact no message was given, then Barton may still be waiting for some vital information. In any case, sir, good, the sooner we try out the weapon, the better. Yes. Well, Wrangle's ready, so is Blom. Ah, now we have our friend here, Mr. White. <coughs> How fortunate he can be the other uh, guinea pig. Ah. Tie him up over there, you two. Don't uh, get no, here. Here, 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 here. I'm just oh, going to give up. you the honor of being the very first victim of our new secret weapon. You, you wouldn't. We most certainly would. Come, sir, good. As soon as you're ready, we'll get out of this room. You all ready now, Barton? Yes, sir. Well, you both look the part anyway. You can drive, can't you, Jock? Drive anything, sir. Then we're all set. Got the van, got the telephone, got the correspondence. Nice touch, that, sir. Looks very convincing. Even got your moustache. <laughs> sure. Could you fall for me with a moustache, Jean? <laughs> Not one like that. Definitely the wall was tight, didn't it? Yes, what, with that and a Cockney accent? How's this? Telephone company, so I got a new telephone for you, sir. Name of Parkinson. That right? <laughs> That's grand. <laughs> How about the reinforcements? They all ready? What time do you expect to arrive at the house? Oh, about half past ten, quarter to eleven. I'll have six carloads ready and waiting at the place we agreed by that time. Good. Hop into the van, Jock. Okay. See you later then. I sincerely hope so, Barton. And good luck. Thanks. Don't worry about me. But if there shouldn't be any signal from Jock here or from me by eleven fifteen, well, it'll be up to you, sir. We'll see to that. Cheerio, Jock. Cheerio, sir. And thanks for giving me the opportunity of joining in the fun. Uh, Well, let's hope you'll still be saying that in an hour or two's time. Cheerio, Jean. See you later. Yes. Take care, Dick, won't you? Oh, don't worry about me. I'll be as careful as a hen with her first egg. (laughs) And Kramer's out of the way. We'll have a party. We certainly will. And what a party. Bye, Jean. Good luck. Thanks. All the best, Jock. Sure, miss. Bash on, then, Jock. Right. Kramer, here we come. Tell me the way, Mr. Barton. 
Yes, but first of all, there's an army ordnance unit I know of. I want to call on them first, and on the way. I've got the very best of the batch of you thinking again. No, I've just thought of something else that might come in useful. Won't take us a minute to get it. Yes. Wrangle and White are propped up against that wall. Directly in line with the ray projector. That's it. Very good. Kramer, I ask you for the last time. I'm not worried about myself or our friend here. But think of the innocent people. Be quiet. You'll be all right. You have the antidote. It's poor White there who suffers. Uh, don't worry about me. <laughs> I'm not worrying about you. Now, Blom, you ready? Yeah, yeah. You know exactly what to do, Blom. Yeah. I think he's got it. Well, if everything's ready. <laughs> yes, no time to waste. Come on into the back room. We're leaving you for a moment, Blom, while you switch on. When you switch off, call us. Good. Come, Sergeant. Right, Blom. I'm sorry about this. Not your fault, sir. Will it help if I close my eyes? I'm afraid not. Oh, well, it hasn't been a bad old life. Here it comes. Poor, poor. Leave that. So. will happen to Snowy? Will Wrangle's antidote work? Will Barton and Jock arrive in time? Listen to the next installment of Dick Barton, Special Agent. Dick Barton, Special Agent. Dick Barton and Jock Anderson, in the guise of post office telephone engineers, are on their way to Kramer's house in the hope that they can gain entrance to the place and sabotage the secret weapon. This will allow Colonel Gardner and his men to attack. Meanwhile, Kramer is trying out the secret weapon and the antidote. Blom, the half-wit, has been instructed in their use and is directing the rays at Snowy and Wrangle. Wrangle has been protected with the antidote, but Snowy White has not. Sorry about this, my boy. Not your fault, sir. Will it help if I close my eyes? I'm afraid not. Oh, well, it hasn't been a bad old life. <laughs> Here it comes. <laughs> Poor Leva So. <laughs> I can't feel anything, can you? Shh. The ray doesn't operate until the third switch is pulled down. Blom's only pulled down two. <laughs> Do you know? What? I believe she's forgotten the third switch. Look at him. He thinks because the generator's making a noise that the machine is working. <laughs> you die. Look, here's your chance. Eh? Pretend your eyes hurt you. Pretend you're in agony. Scream. Yes, make them think the weapon is working. Oh, I get you. Here. Oh, oh, my eyes. You swines. What have you done to me? Eyes, they hurt. I can't see... Wrangle! Wrangle, do something! Do something for me! I can't see! I can do nothing, my boy! Ah. <laughs> Trauma! So good! Please! Please help me for heaven's sake! Keep it up! Blink your eyes hard to make the tears come, then keep them shut! Uh, wrangle! Wrangle, I'm blind! I can't see anymore! What can I do? Fix the machine off! It worked, Kramer. It worked. You unspeakable swine, Kramer. What's the matter, Angle? You're all right, aren't you? Yes, but this man is blind and condemned to a lingering death and any other unfortunate people who are in line with the ray. Excellent. I could have hoped for nothing better. Why do you join us, Wrangle, you fool? Together, the three of us will control the whole world. I'd rather you directed the ray at me and let me die. Very noble, but unutterably foolish. Still, why waste time talking? I would have liked to have had Wrangle with us. Why? Before we parted company... We've begun to work together on a new interplanetary rocket. My dear Thurgood, you will have quite enough to cope with on this planet once we are the masters. 
without travelling to Mars or Jupiter. Can't you do something for me, I, sir? Please, I can't see. And I'm afraid you will never see again. Will you, sir? No. <laughs> Not only that, but I fear that the action of a ray upon the eyes is only the first uh, symptom. So from the eyes, the effects travel to the brain. It takes some little time. And I'm afraid we shan't be able to wait to see those effects, Mr. Wright. If I could only get my hands round your throat just for a minute, I... But you can't, Blum. (laughs) You've done very well. (laughs) Now take these two men and throw them in the cellar out of the way. (laughs) You don't think we should take Wrangle with us? No, he'll only be a continual nuisance and a possible menace to our safety. Now, take them both away, Blom. Men like you always come to the same unpleasant type of end, Grammar. Keep your mouth shut, you old fool. <laughs> Get them out of here, Blom. Yeah. <laughs> where are you? Where, where are you, Wrangle? I can't see you. Yeah. Give me something for me eyes. Anything. Now what? Go and fix this weapon in the plane, ready for action. We strike at once, then? As soon as we can. I'll give instructions for the parts to be cleared from the plane to the runway on the airfield. I must confess, I'm expecting cars loaded with police to arrive at any moment. Yes, there is that possibility, but uh, we can be ready for them, I think. With this weapon? We could use that weapon, but it complicates matters. I think we might prepare a little surprise package somewhere in the drive, just in case. Now, let me see. I think... Get what you wanted from that ordinance depot, Mr. Barton. Yes, Charlie. Here. Take a look. Recognize it? Ooh, I'll say I do. Useful sort of thing to have around. What do you intend doing with it? Well, it depends on what happens at Kramer's place. But it may come in handy before the morning's out. Let's just run over the plan of campaign again, eh? Well, we're nearly there now. This is what we do. Once we're inside the grounds, we'll take a walk around the house, pretend to be following the telephone wires. If we can get a line on the place where the secret weapon's located, and I suspect it'll be in the plane by now, ready for moving off, then I'll have a bash at sabotaging it. But what if the weapon is in the plane and the plane is under a strong guard? In that case, I shall leave you outside and I shall go inside and see if I can collar the antidote. And if that's already in the plane under guard... Oh, you think of everything, don't you? Just as well to look ahead. Well, if we can't get at the weapon or the antidote, we'll just have to kill Kramer and Thurgood. Oh, preferably with our bare hands. The more I think about it, the better I like the idea of killing those they two. They sound the right sort of people to kill. What's the time now? Up past ten. And this is the road we want. Now, listen, Jock. If I should be inside the house or separated from you for any reason... I? Well, you take the very pistol, and if I can grab the antidote or sabotage the weapon, as soon as I've done that, it'll be safe for Colonel Gardner to attack. How shall I know? I'll whistle this tune. I get you. As soon as I hear that tune, I fire the very light. That's it. And don't hang about from then on, because I shouldn't be surprised if things don't start to warm up. You sure they don't expect me to clear off and leave them, do you? Of course. Don't hang about whatever you do. Oh, no, you don't. I'll stick around till we're both out. Much better if... Hello, here we are. Here's the house. Now, let me do most of the talking. Okay. Here. Look, Mr. Barton. They're digging the drive up. Hi. Mate. You there, Cocky. Vin? Can we come up the blinking drive? No, you cannot. But we got to. We've come to fix a phone. We have got a phone. We do not want any more. This is Ashwell Court, isn't it? Yes. Then this is the place. Drive on, Jock. I tell you, we do not want a phone. And in any case, you cannot come up this drive. We are working on it. Look, I've got the order here in black and white, and I've got my instructions, too. Here they are. I ain't leaving yet till I've seen the boss. Well, you cannot drive the van up this drive, because we are working on it. Okay. Well, walk up your blooming drive. We ain't fussy. Come on, Jock. Out. Bring the tools. Right. <clears throat> Give us a hand, will you? Of course. Give me that thing, Jock. This is a nuisance. It can't be helped. Here, put it in the tool bag. That the look. That's a lot. Here it goes, then. I'd better come with you. That's all right, mate. We can find our way to the front door. I dare say. But our boss does not like strangers snooping around the joint. What do you mean, snooping? We've come here to fix a telephone. It won't take us ten minutes. But very well, come with me. But do not tread any more on this drive. Cool. Bit fussy about your drive, ain't you? Won't have to tread on it, will it? Yes, it will. Come on. Keep on the ground. All right, all right. We'll stay off your drive. Don't worry. Come on, Jock. Sooner we get this here job over and done with, the better. Don't seem to like us here. We do not like strangers. Now, you stay outside here while I go and see the boss. Okay, tell him it won't take us more than ten minutes. Yeah. Had to take the correspondence as well. All right, give it to me. Now, you stay here and do not go snooping around. Don't worry, mate. Well, so far, so good. Yes. 
Take a look over here, Jock. There's the shed with the plane in it. Aye, and there's about six chaps hanging around outside the door. Keep looking up, Jock, as though you're studying the telephone wires, just in case there's anybody watching us. If the weapon's already mounted inside that plane, we've had it. You'll never break through that bunch in the door. No, I guess you're right. That means we've got to get inside. Don't look now, but somebody's watching us from a window. Well, they'll no recognize us. I'll go in first, leaving you outside. As soon as you get a chance to take our little surprise packet out of the tool bag, put it under that bush. This bush by the window? Yes, tuck it out of sight. We may need it later. Look, what is all this? What sort of men are they? Why were they let in? I thought it would be best to bring them in. I did not want them getting suspicious. We don't want a phone anyway. There's a mistake somewhere. Oh, it's quite understandable. This letter explains it. The previous tenant ordered an extra phone and it's just become available. Well, explain the mistake to the man. Where are the men? Outside, sir. You can see them from this window. Where? Oh, yes, I see. Oh, they seem all right. <laughs> it isn't friend Barton, anyway. Well, tell them we don't want an extra phone and let them go. Yes, sir. Have you finished that little job in the drive? Yes, sir, it is all finished. Oh, splendid. And it looks as though we're practically ready then, sir. Yes, practically ready. Here he comes, Jock. Blimey, thought you'd gone on your holidays, Jam. There has been a mistake. This phone was ordered by the man who lived here nine months ago. Man named uh, Parkinson. That's the name, yes, Parkinson. Well, he has left. Present owner is a man named Harris. Well, blimey, do that, Jock. Ain't that just like our people? Send yeah. us here on a wild goose chase? Come on, then. Oh, half a minute. Say, Jam, would your boss mind if we used your phone just for a minute? If I ring our people up, you see, they'll tell us where to take the thing. Save us going all the way back to the depot, see? There is a phone box just outside the gate. Oh, yes, so there is. Well, if your boss will just sign this form and say we call... Oh, 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 I've dropped it. There it is behind you, chum. Pick it up and let your boss see it. What do you think I am? A... Back into the side. Quick, Jock, in the bushes. Right. You just stick around here and look innocent. Where are you going? Inside the house. Here goes. Don't let them see you from the window, and if I give the signal, fire that very pistol and run like the devil. I'll be right after you. All right, Mr. Barton. Just as you say. I think we're all right. The men on the drive can't see us here. What's your plan? As agreed. Try for the weapon or the antidote. If not, I shall kill Kramer. Good luck. I'll keep this monkey wrench. It might come in useful. Right, here I go. <laughs> so, my dear Thurgood. We stand on the threshold of our venture. Everything is ready. And the weapon is in the plane, already mounted for action. Then the sooner we get off, the better. Listen, Jock. All the men have had their instructions on how to get out of this country and where to rendezvous in two weeks' time. Then, in case we have to operate the weapon and to be on the safe side, we should both use the antidote, I think. So should the pilot of the plane. Yes. In that case, Blom can take the antidote over to the plane and we can apply it when we're in the air. I'll send him across with it now. Blom? Blom, come here a minute. What's happening, Mr. Barton? They're calling Blom. They're going to give him the antidote to take over to the plane. It couldn't have worked better. You mean we'll get him as he comes out? Yes. Flatten yourself against the wall by this door. That's it. As he comes out, I'll let him have it. <laughs> nice work, Mr. Barton. Here's the stuff we want. Grand. Now then, you take it and get cracking, Jock. Dodge through the bushes and then fire the very light. What about you? I'll hold friends Kramer and Thurgood. Go on, beat it quick. I don't like the That's an order. Beat it. And when you fire the very light, make sure they don't spot you. Okay. I'll see you later. Yes. Things appear to have worked out very well, Kramer. Yes, very well. It's a pity we shan't be here to see the reception which Barton and Gardner will get. What? Uh, Were you arranging a special reception for me, will you? No, keep your hands well up. And you, Brother Thurgood. Uh. Ah, in the nick of time again, eh, Barton? And disguised, too. How very amusing. Yes, in the nick of time, as ever. With lots of reinforcements? All in good time. Oh, don't tell me you've come here without reinforcements again, my dear Barton, really. I don't think we've overlooked any possibilities this time, Willie. I'm afraid you've overlooked just one, Barton. I don't think so. <coughs> well done, Blom. Well done. Kill. No, Blom. No, 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 no. Kill. Don't kill him. Kill. Not just for a moment. Hold his arms behind his back, Blom. Oh. That's it. Yeah. Golly. Oh, what a nasty grip you've got, Blom. Yeah. And what a devil of a thick skull you must have. You know, you amaze me, Barton. What the... Why, look! A carry light. A warning. Yes, you've had it, Willie, old son. Listen. But this is perfect, Thurgood. Huh? Here we are, all ready to get off in the plane with the weapon, and Barton turns up so that we can finish him off. 
And here, I'll be bound, a car's full of police. And, of course, Colonel Garth. Precisely, Willie. And, of course, the lady friend. Possibly. Excellent. Now, before we kill you off, Barton, you can wait with us and watch the cars come roaring up the drive. You see, I have had it specially mined in readiness, Father. Is Kramer speaking the truth? Will Gardiner and Jean be blown up? Will Kramer and Thurgood escape? Listen to the next installment of Dick Barton, Special Agent. Dick Barton, Special Agent. Dick Barton and Jock Anderson have managed to get into Kramer's house, hoping to sabotage the secret weapon. Barton sends Jock outside to fire a very pistol, giving Colonel Gardner and his men the signal to attack. Meantime, Barton holds Kramer and Thurgood at gunpoint. But Blom has come up behind him and now pinions Barton's arms at the very moment that the attack begins. And this is perfect, Thurgood. Mm -hmm. Here we are, all ready to go off in the plane with the weapon. Barton turns up so that we can finish him off. And here I'll be bound, a car's full of police and, of course, Colonel Garth. Precisely, Willie. And, of course, the lady friend. Possibly. Excellent. Now, before we kill you off, Barton, you can wait with us and watch the cars come roaring up to drive. You see, I have had it specially mined in readiness, Father. What? Wait patiently, Barton, and you'll hear all your friends blown to kingdom come. But don't worry. You won't be long in following them. Blum! Blum, hold him tight there. Blum! Blum! Who told you ever to hold a man like that from behind? You, you're all up in the air. Ah! Over my shoulder goes one blow. Bye. Thurgood, don't let him get away. Mind out what I fire. Quickly. Now. Oh, damnation. Fire again, robber. I can't. It's jammed. Jammed, I tell you. Get out of my way, James Thurgood. Out of my way. That very light was the warning. The cars are started. I'll give the signal to attack, and then... Stand by, driver. Okay, sir. How far is it? Only a few minutes' run. We daren't park too near the house. Otherwise, we should have given the show away. These few minutes may make all the difference in the lives of two men. Yes, they certainly got guts anyway, the pair of them. That's not much use if both of them are wiped out. A bit morbid, aren't you? I don't know, but this game seems so impersonal somehow. Someone dies, what difference does it make to the general public? In this particular case, if Barton's been successful, it will have made all the difference in the world to the general public. And what difference will that make to Dick Barton with a bullet through his head? Hey, hey, how long have you been Barton's publicity agent? Well, you know what I mean. Yeah, so at one time you told me he'd never make a good agent for our kind of work. A girl can change your mind, can't she? Sure, sure. Now, we'd better be moving. It's the next road but one, on the right. What? Hello. Yes, Jock, running towards us like mad. Hold it, driver. Hold it in a minute. Yes, okay, sir. Nice work, Colonel Garner, sir. Where's Dick? Hey? Dick Barton. Where is he? He's back in the house with Kramer. What, prisoner? Not when I left. Where's the secret weapon? Mudger and Kramer's played under guard. But damn it, man. They must be able to use it on us, no then. No fear, Barton. Scugged one of the gang and pinched the antidote. Splendid. That means they can't operate the weapon without the antidote. No, and I destroyed the antidote a few seconds ago. Excellent, Jock. Yes, yes, we know it is. But let's get on. We're wasting time. Right. Get in this car, Jock. Okay. Wave the cars behind to follow me. They've all had their instructions. Now for the fun and games. There. That's the house. That's right, Miss. That's it. You know what to do, driver. Yes, sir. Rush tactics. Sweep straight into the drive and rush the house as arranged. Here we go. Here's Mr. Barton, sir. What's he doing? Running towards us. That's all right. He can join us. Let's swing right into the drive. Hey, Barton! What the devil? Barton, you idiot! Dick! Dick. Well, swing the steering wheel, man. Here! Barton! You have a smashed up! Dick! Oh, sorry about that. You fool, Barton. You might have killed a lot of us. Stupid thing to do. This drive is mine. Landmines. More stupid thing to do to let you go up it. What? Oh. Heavens. Keep down, sir, for the Lord's sake. 
They'll be firing from the house any second. Keep down, you chaps. Use the cars as cover. Hmm. Sydney Street siege all over again, eh? <laughs> no place for a woman. What do you want to bring her for? Couldn't leave her behind. Well, I hope now she's here. She does as she's told. <laughs> Hear that, Jean? Who's giving the orders around here? Carry on, Barton. It's your show. All your men armed, sir? Yes, mostly with pistols, though. Not much use against rifles. Let him carry on firing for a bit. Keep down, Jean. I've been in these shows before. Well, act as though you have been, and don't keep popping up like a jack-in-the-box. Have you got any rifles at all, sir? Very few. One or two in the next car, I think. Tell you what, Barton, I've got a pierce. What, one of those portable anti-tank come mortar things? Yes, uh-huh. thought it might be useful. There's a couple of infantry corporals in the next car with it. Just the thing to give the plane a bashing with, sir. Yes, Jock, you're right, and the plane's in that shed over there, the big place. I've got a loud hailer apparatus fixed up in the third car. I'll crawl along to it and warn the people in the house, tell them to surrender. Don't think they will. Well, we'll give them a chance. There'll be a crowd here soon as well, sir. Issue a warning to the public to keep away. Tell them it ain't an army manoeuvre, it's the real thing. Good idea. I'll crawl along and tell them. We're fairly safe. Behind this low wall? Yes, and sir, send the two Piat boys along to me here. They'll have a fairly good light on the house from here. Right. The shed will be a bit difficult, Mr. Barton. Trees are in the way. Yes, we can try it, though. Or perhaps if we drop one in through the window, that might scare them into surrender. Now, if we could get over into the... Oh, dear! You're a fine one to talk about bobbing up and down. (laughs) She had you there. (laughs) One up to you, Jean. Oh, nice shooting, Sergeant. I think I winged him, sir. I think so, too. Hand me a rifle, Jock. Yeah. I don't suppose Willie Cramer and old Thurgood will show their faces in the window, but you never know. They, they do might. do my heart good to get John Cramer on the sights of a rifle. Me, too. And me. Cool. Listen to old Bloodthirsty here. Regular Amazon, isn't she? Yes, tough guy. Oh, we all know the type. You've described it before. The gangster's mall type, I think you said. <laughs> Captain of the hockey team and all that. Much more of this, and I shall begin to wish I'd let your silly head stay above the wall. Quiet, girl. Watch this, Jock, my boy. That nasty piece of work who was on the drive is just going to pop his head through that curtain, I can tell. Beauty, sir. Sport is good luck, sir. Should have sport his interest in most things, I fancy. <laughs> we don't stand any chance, Kramer. Let's get out. We'll make a dash for the plane and turn the secret weapon on the lot of It wouldn't take a second to render them all as blind as bats. And whilst we stay here, you never know, we may stop a stray bullet. That's swine, Barton. Attention, everybody. Attention. Listen, they're using a loud hailer. A field mortar, you hear? Yes. Listen, you men. The secret weapon is mounted on the plane. Thurgood and I will make a dash for it, while you hold out a white flag as though you are going to surrender. Gardner's men will then begin to advance towards this house. As they get near, I shall direct the weapon on them and blind them. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Come on, then, Thurgood. You understand, men? Hold out the white handkerchief while we get to the plane. Come along, Carver. Thirty seconds nearly up. Your Piat, ready for firing, Barton? You two lads ready? Will, okay, sir. Aim for the wall just above the bay window for the first shot. Okay. Ready when you are, sir. Give them another ten seconds. Right. Why, hello. They put out a white flag. They've surrendered. Hooray! I don't like this, Jean. They've decided that discretion is the better part of battle. It's not like Willie Kramer at all, you know, not a bit. We'll move forward when you're ready, Barton. Don't like it, sir. They're surrendering, that's all. Ah, I wonder. Well, they can't use a secret weapon without the antidote. But Willie doesn't know they've lost the antidote. The jock here took it away and got rid of it. No, so he doesn't. Give him a few more seconds, then. Very nice, Thurgood. We did that very smoothly. Good idea to bring the pilot, too. Just in case, one can never tell. You better get aboard the plane, Jinx. Right. I can see from here clearly... Gardner and Barton haven't started to advance upon the house yet. Get into the plane quick, Thurgood, and start operating the weapon. Must put on the antidote first, all three of us. Won't take a second, though. Where is it? I told Blonde to put it in the plane, by the weapon. Isn't here. Not there, but where? Here, let me look. It isn't here, I tell you. I said all along, you place too much trust in that half wit Blonde, far too much. Just a minute. I see what happened. Barton, he knocked out Blonde, must have destroyed the antidote, too. What? 
In that case, we're finished. Not at all. Jenks? Yeah? Is the plane ready to take off? Only a case of opening these shed doors wide, then we can taxi straight out onto the airfield runway. They can't see the doors from where they are. We can get straight away now. We shall have a secret weapon with us, Grammer. And I have a formula written down for Wrangle's antidote. We can go direct to Europe. And work from there. <laughs> a good idea. I would have liked to settle accounts with Barton and Gardner. Why not? Are the rifles here, Jenks? Two or three in the plane here, loaded, sir. Well, we'll take one each. And just as friend Jenks is about to start the engine, we'll fire at Barton and Gardner, eh? They won't see you from this shed, and you can just get a nice line of fire from those broken boards there. Splendid. Jenks, be ready to start the plane as soon as you hear us fire. Right. When the colonel and I move forward, corporal, don't you two come with us, but at the first sign of any treachery, fire the piot. Got it? Sir. Think we've given them long enough? Looks like it. Let's go in anyway. Stay here, Jean, with these corporals. No fear. I said stay here. I'm in charge. Yes, all right. Come on, then. Don't walk on that drive, sir. And keep what cover you can in case... Personally, I... Ah! Down, everyone, down. They're shooting from the plane shed. Colonel Gardner, are you all right? Shoulder. The swines. Okay, corporals, fire the piot. Are you hurt? Who shot? I told you to stay where you were. It's Colonel Gardner. I'll help him. But look, that plane. Kramer and Thurgood, they're getting away. Not yet. Well, stop them somehow. They've got the weapon. Jock, where's the tool bag we brought? Behind this book. Give it me, quick. Okay, wish me luck. Dick, where are you going, Dick? I not like the devil, Mr. Barton. will be off in a minute. What on earth is he? Nicely. We are getting away, Thurgood. That's something. Why aren't they firing at us? Waiting till we're in the air, maybe. Hello, someone running. It's Barton. He'll try to jump on this plane. Fire, Thurgood. You have a rifle. Hurry, Jenks. This time, maybe. He's gaining on us. Hurry, Jenks. Can't go any faster while we're taxiing on this ground. Be on the runway and airborne in a jiffy. Now, Thurgood, he's almost on us. Fire. I got him. Yes. He seemed to thud against the plane as he fell. I'm sure I got him. Look, he's lying on the ground back there. Here we go, sir. On the runway, and we're off. Are you all right, Mr. Barton? Sure, Jock, sure. Missed me again. Did they get you? Who, me? No fear. Hello, sir. How's the shoulder? Painful. Not so painful as the thought that Kramer and Thurgood are away up there with a secret weapon. They're not away yet. Watch. Let's see. 60 seconds is just about up now. Look, Dick, look. The wings dropped off. Yes, by gad. Look, Barton. It's out of control. It's spinning. It's on fire. Nice work, Mr. Barton. Nice work. You mean... You did it? How? A little piece of frightfulness known as a sticky bomb, with one or two refinements added. Well, I... Goodbye, Willie. Bye, Thurgood. I'm afraid this time you've had it. There she goes. And the secret weapon goes with her. And a darn good job, too. Now let's find Snowy and old Wrangle. All right, you are a warehouse, well Captain Barton. <laughs> Can't keep a couple of good men down, you know. Good lad, Snowy. Hello, Sir Archie. Now home to get some shut-eye and a bit of peace. Home and shut-eye, yes. A bit of peace? Well, I wonder, Dick Barton. I wonder. What does Colonel Gardner mean? Will Dick Barton be coming back? Your guess is as good as mine. That was the last installment for the time being of Dick Burton, Special Agent. 